dead <laughs> fat lady <laughs> removed on flatbed. Um, mm. Dead flat, fat, flat lady. <laughs> dead flat lady on a fat... Uh, huh? I was just thinking, <laughs> dead fat. <laughs> well, there's something in the story that's so, Whew, so, you. so tragic. She stepped on the foot on the way out. <laughs> Some outrage and disturbing questions tonight about the treatment of a body by the Marion County Coroner's Office. Oh. Instead of an ambulance or a nondescript van, the coroner's office used a wrecker service to remove the remains of a Northeast Side woman Good. who died yesterday. And they did this in front of her family and neighbors. How the fuck were they supposed to get her out of the house? Yeah. How about the family and neighbors? What are they, the same ones that fed this fucking right. beast? What the fuck you want? Them to build a bigger ambulance for your fat yeah. body? Family and neighbors. Well, Tricia, the Marion County Coroner's Office has characterized the situation as both unusual and delicate. But, in fact, the chief deputy coroner here insists that the office acted in the best interest of the victim's family. You be the judge. All right. 48-year-old Teresa Smith lived a solitary, <laughs> reclusive life. Recess. The handling of her death has become a public embarrassment for the coroner's office. It should have been handled a little different, you know. What I mean, because putting her on a flatbed truck like they did, that was that was like putting a cow up there. Exactly. Smith weighed 750 pounds. Ah, we're not even talking about a lady that's you know. Look, 300 pounds. Something has to be 400 done. 400 pounds. Five. We're talking about a 700 pound woman. When a behemoth dies. What the fuck did you want? You you can't just throw it in the back of an ambulance and have it doing a wheelie. All the way to the coroner's <laughs> office. <laughs> Look Smith at the size of the blanket. 750 pounds, and the deputy coroner who attended her death called a towing service to remove the body. Meh, meh, meh. It's like they kind of hauled off like trash. You know, it's like they didn't have respect for her body. They and kind of just towed her away like she was a, like a lemon. She okay. didn't respect her body. Thank you, Jimmy. Yay. You beat me by a second. She didn't they respect treated. her own body. What do you What do you want from these people? What do you What do you want? They, they could have cut her in half and put her in two ambulances. They treated her like the slob she was. Right. Exactly. She the was fuck a... were they supposed to do? For real. That would be funny. Cut her in pieces right in front of the family with a chainsaw. Hey! <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> could have left her in the house and let her rot for a while until she dropped four or five hundred yeah, pounds. That would work. From rotting, and then maybe get her in an ambulance, a bambolance. Bambola well, I need a bambolance. And then this part might have been a little rough, this next part. Uh oh. <laughs> this is the part of the story I might agree with. They the put rest... a spare in her hiney hole? <laughs> <laughs> so far, I don't agree, but this. Hiney hole. <laughs> but this part got a little, uh, a little <laughs> ugly. Many of Smith's neighbors watched the record driver winch the victim's mattress to a cable and drag it into the courtyard. <laughs> what really got me is when they took her off onto the flatbed. They um, threw this dirty, dirty carpet on top of her. <laughs> and I just thought that was so disrespectful. Once on board, they strapped the body to the record and gave Smith a police escort to the morgue. We escorted her downtown uh, with two police cars and, and myself and coroner, uh, just in case something went wrong where she uh, was uncovered. Throughout the uh, entire ordeal, David Johnson and his 13-year-old son watched from a distance, grief-stricken and at the same time disbelieving. If there was any other way they could have took her out of there, I, I wish they would have done it that way instead of having to move her out on a giant um, helicopter. When they scoop up yeah. dead dogs off the street, they don't treat them that way. Oh, shut it's up. No 750-pound yeah. dogs dying exactly. on the street, dummy. Do if a really cow died, what do you think they'd do? They'd right. Get a fucking the, the same rig. Oh, stop! What do you if one did? Yeah, it, it did. She's. Do they really use a winch? To yeah. Get her out what of are there? they gonna do? Pick wow. her up? All that fat, big so they, smelly body. What are they tired to the mattress and then winch the whole thing out? Yeah. yeah they should just, Who they, wouldn't want to see that? No. Like a circus act. I would have laughed until my fucking throat hurt. <laughs> Watching that fat fucking spectacle be <laughs> pulled out by machinery. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go to Chad in Canada. Chad. Hey, how you doing, guys? Chad hey. Hey. hey, listen, uh, usually when we shoot a moose in Canada, we got to quarter it before we can drag it out of the bush. Yeah, they're Find pretty big. Out. Yeah. So they could have quartered her. It that could have been worse. Uh, Oscar in Ohio. 
Yeah, hey, I live in Marion County. Yeah, they actually tied the winch cable to her and drug her up on the flatbed like you do a car. It's, that's <laughs> so ridiculous. Well, I mean, I'm sure her body wasn't scraping on the pavement. No. She was still on the mattress part. Like a good tone of the... Uh... Yeah. The yard where they keep your uh, car when you right. you park illegally. <laughs> yeah, I see no problem with what they did. You you can claim your pig at Pier sixty one, <laughs> wherever it is. What was their option? <laughs> what are they saying they should have done? Um, What's I don't the option? Treat it with more dignity. Wait. How? Not cover her with an old piece of carpet. Let her lay there and just form a new La Brea tar pit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking big fatso, dumb family just throwing food at her. Larry the trucker. Larry. Larry. Yes, sir. They wouldn't have got so mad if they hadn't stuck a wide load sticker on her ass and put flags on her hips. <laughs> you know, that's very dangerous, though. It's a wide load driving down the street. <laughs> Some trucking humor right. for everybody. I like it, Larry. Larry Watch rules. All right. They want a skydiver to come down so the parachute could cover her gently. Yeah. <laughs> she needed to be covered. Maybe they could use Or just them. nothing. Maybe just like, could... yeah, leave nothing. Ah, maybe they could use the sheet instead of the rug. The sheet only... probably wouldn't cover her. You yeah. don't think? Probably oh. not. That's 750 crazy. pounds? That'd just be oozing fat. Oh. Uh, Blue Healer, you're right. I guess God needed a fat fucking woman. <laughs> <laughs> God needed a new girl to fuck at the party. <laughs> no, she's dead. Oh, yes, no. What happened? Yes. What oh, happened no. to this? Food! 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 <laughs> food! 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 No, she's dead! <laughs> Father accused of biting out kid's eye. We never did the kid eye biting. Yeah, we never did that one. Biting it out. Why not? Why would you do that? Angry? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, true. Probably a bad That's boy. A grape. Let's guess why he did this. Oof. Uh, the kid did something bad. No, I don't um, think the father's that. crazy. No, that's crazy. No, come on. Uh, it is a crime that has disgusted and flabbergasted residents. Uh, it was pretty bizarre, you know. The man who lives here, Angel Vidal Mendoza, is accused of biting out one of his son's eyes and mutilating the other. Ow. Police say Mendoza appeared under the influence of PCP oh. back when the April 28th incident took place. They say after he attacked his son, he rolled his wheelchair outside and uh -oh. began hacking at his own legs with an axe. That's when this neighbor intervened. I just had to hold him down with my knee. There was dry blood around his mouth. I don't know if it was his own or anything, but I'm pretty sure it was his son now that I heard the story. Doctors say it's not clear if the four-year-old boy will ever regain his vision in his eye. As for the dad, he's facing charges of mayhem, torture, and child <laughs> cruel mayhem. Charges of mayhem? Mayhem. Where's that in the book? You're causing mayhem. What's not in the story, though, is the <laughs> quote from the kid. Yeah. I guess they they got to him and they asked him ah! what happened. <laughs> and he said, my daddy ate my eyes. Jesus No way. Christ. Swear to God. And then he's hatching at his Holy own leg. Holy shit. And then finally the neighbors go, you know what, I think there might be a problem over there. I'm yeah, going to intervene. This has gone far enough. Yeah, way to go, neighbor. He wheeled himself out and started hacking his legs with a, a hatchet. That's great. Mm, oh, that poor kid. What That's is this hurt. about? We got an update on the tiger mauling story. Keith in California. Keith. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? Good. Yeah, you know, you guys did that story a few months back about the uh, the kids that were throwing batteries at the uh, tiger. Yes. Uh, they just were awarded a million dollars for pain and suffering. This is the is this the San Francisco Zoo story? Yeah. They were the, their, their names are the DeWalt brothers. One yeah. of them's actually in jail for uh, stealing. Yeah, they provoked the uh, the tiger. The tiger gets out because uh, the 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 area wasn't properly uh, what. It was it, it four and a half feet too the short. Wasn't yeah, high yeah it wasn't high enough. And then the one guy is getting ready to be mauled, and he's trying to get into the snack area, and, and the lady is saying, no, sorry, we're closed, no, not aware that there's a tiger out there and there could be a problem. Yeah, it's like, could you let that me in? But now you're telling me one of the kids got a million dollars, even though he was the one that provoked the whole fucking thing? Yeah, both him and his brothers, they were, they were supposedly drunk when they were doing it, and they were firing batteries at the tigers to get them to, uh, to react. That'll do it. Jesus. <laughs> I D cells. Is this true, Dan? Yeah, it sure is. They're going to get uh, 900 grand. What? And it says the brothers sued the zoo last November. Uh, the lawsuit claimed the men's civil rights were violated and accused the zoo of negligence for not building a moat big enough that the tiger couldn't escape. 
So we, we should be allowed to throw batteries allow at it. We should allow kids to throw batteries at tigers. I don't agree with Without that. the tiger getting out and attacking us for being pissed off because it got hit and by it a here, battery. The, uh, the lawsuit also accused uh, Singer, who is the spokesperson for the zoo, uh, they accused him of libel and slander for suggesting the men might have been taunting the cat. Uh, what else do you do with a battery throwing at a cat? Right. Maybe they weren't. <laughs> Were they saying if the tiger needed flashlight batteries? Tiger had an iPod. <laughs> well, this is good well, news. you guys. Keith, good news, though. Dog shit sniffer from Woodside. A little more to the oh. story. He was guilty of mayhem, but was found innocent of tomfoolery. <laughs> wow. Got to love our justice system in California. <laughs> Thank God he didn't get the tomfoolery charge as well. Hijinks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Wow, there's an update for you, huh? What the fuck? Our, uh, this country is so fucking weird, man. Well, I hope it's a crazy world and getting crazier. Oh, regular Joe. Did they kill a tiger, too? Of course they did. They had to kill a tiger yeah. because some idiots were throwing batteries at it, and the tiger decided, you know what, enough with the battery throwing. Got I'm payback. jumping this motherfucking moat, and I'm going to eat the shit out of their heinies. And so I knew I could get over that moat. Right. So for, for minding its own now. business, he's dead, and the kids get a million dollars. What a country. What a country. Well, let's go to the zoo employee then. Ooh. Zoo employee confuses degreaser with <laughs> the snow cone syrup. That's going to cause some problems. What kind of problem do you think this caused? Because it could uh, go either way. I think you would know right away, right? We're thinking either, I'm thinking some greasy uh, gears. I mean, some sticky gears. Ah, or, or a horrendous treat cone. for the kids. It's a horrible snow cone. Which way does it go? A uh, horrible treat. Horrible treat, you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. One of these bottles contains blue degreaser, while the other contains blue syrup. Does it's it? pretty hard to tell which is which. The two bottles are the exact same shape, size, and color, and it's those similarities that confused a new zoo employee who accidentally grabbed a bottle of the blue cleaner when told to get more syrup bottles to throw a where? snow cone machine. The garage? Several of the tainted snow cones were sold to people, including this woman. And they took bites, and we noticed they didn't taste the same. And so I tasted it. I thought maybe the utensils were dirty. And then someone ran up to us and told us that it was degreaser on top of the blue snow cone That's instead nice. of the blue syrup. The people who ate the snow cones spit them out immediately and went to the emergency room as a precaution. Be careful and pay attention to what you're grabbing. What a dumb. Because it could have turned tragic. Zoo officials say they're very sorry about the mix-up. Could have turned tragic if you kept eating something that didn't taste good. Right, it just tastes like bad that butter. That was grease. The best part about that, uh, <laughs> that woman that was talking who had gotten one of these tainted snow cones, uh, they shot her shadow because she was a big fat person and didn't want to be on the news uh, about, see? <laughs> about a snow cone story. Yeah. So they, they just shot her, not even in silhouette, but just her shadow on the floor. And, <laughs> and so you could tell she was a big mess. Great big fat person. <laughs> big pig having a snow cone. You'd be able to tell right away before you even <laughs> chomp into the snow cone that something didn't look right. Yeah. Something's amiss. You knew it wouldn't be a salad mishap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, best 911 call ever. Let's get this yeah, out of the way. Let's get to it now that we have plenty of time. No. I'm sorry, it's 20 0 Winford? Yes. Okay, and what's going on there? That shit happened yesterday, and you motherfuckers trying to put my ass in jail and okay. not understanding what's going on. Okay, do you need medical attention? Yes. What, what is wrong? I don't know. I ain't no goddamn doctor. Okay, sir, I'm trying to help you. Well, help me send me some out here. What the hell? What's the hold up? Sir, what it, are you feeling pain? What is the problem? I'm crazy as hell. Uh, so do you need us? I don't know. What I need Sheriff's office, are you on the line? Yes, we are. Do you need us to go with you? He said uh, somebody hit him. He is hurt. I ain't had my goddamn medicine this morning. I ain't got no medicine. I went to the fucking hospital. And the doctor got mad because I told him that uh, the white boy used to fuck my mama a long time ago. Sir, are you in pain somewhere or what is it? Yes, I got headaches in my leg and everything. I've been in a fucking fight. So you need you want the paramedics to come and check you, correct? Well, I thought you were getting. What the hell going on? <laughs> Sir, you need to calm down and talk to me. I am trying to help you and I'm trying to send the paramedics, but I need to understand what the problem is. I don't know what the problem is. Okay, but you're feeling head pain, is that correct? 
I've been, yes, I've been injured. I've been hit on the head and everything else. How else do a motherfucker be a cop? All right, when, when, when did that happen? Yesterday. Damn. My head is hurting. You gonna send somebody out here or you gonna fuck around on the phone? <laughs> Sir, I have no problem sending you help, okay? The paramedics will come and they'll check you. Oh, she's getting <laughs> frustrated. He's just gonna fuck around on the phone. He's got a point, though. That's her <laughs> job, though. What do we know so far? Well, I'm this very guy, confused. This guy here. got into a fight. He's he's calling 911. Yeah. And he's just he, he just wants... He doesn't understand why he just can't call 911 and then get response. Okay. Yeah, he wants to just, just show up. Yeah. But, you know, it could be a police, it could be paramedic, it could be fire, it could be, like, you need to tell the person what the problem is so that they can send the proper equipment over. It could be a kitten in a tree. Yeah. It well, continues. The just, caller gets uh, very frustrated. Because she's, she's just fucking around on the phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm 62 years old. I retired from Don McCrack. Okay, and are you in Millennium Point Apartments? Yes. What apartment I, number are you in? What's going on down there, ma'am? <laughs> Sir, I am trying to help you. What apartment number are you in? What well, shit? My head is hurting. You tell Can me, you tell, tell me, me what apartment number my... you're in? What? What apartment number are you in? I ain't no goddamn apartment. Are what you in Millennium like Point Apartments? Motherfucker, what's wrong with your ass? How much schooling have you had? Sir, are you in Millennium Point Apartments? <laughs> I told you that. Okay, what, what apartment point number point are you in? Effort? What apartment number are you in? I ain't no goddamn apartment. It's a town. Town. Okay, and what kind of medical history do you have, sir? I don't know. Let them check it out. I ain't no <laughs> fucking doctor. I ain't no nurse either. Okay. You use that as you want to know. That's how it's been since you What's before. your name? I'm and what's the phone number that you're calling from? I don't know what it is. I, I gave you the goddamn address. That's enough. Are you? Is your phone number four zero seven eight eight? Well, you know the fucking number. Why you ask me? <laughs> because I need to confirm it with you, sir. <laughs> All right, you got. It. <laughs> oh, this motherfucker! He doesn't have a head injury. No, He's this too guy. Smart. Is, this guy's fine. He's just an asshole. <laughs> you know about him. Why don't I ask me? Motherfucking asshole. He's just an asshole. They should leave him there to just die with and, his head injury. And we got one more uh, piece here. Do you not have an apartment number? I ain't got no god. I don't live in no goddamn apartment. I live in a townhouse, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. So? Yeah, we still need do you, uh, Sir, do you have a townhouse number? What did you motherfucker? Okay. And so we definitely need you to go with us. We're on our way. Nah. Okay. I'll let them know. Sir, stay on the phone with the sheriff's office, okay? Do you need to talk to him, Esso? I want to try. Okay. Thank you. Sir? Hello? Yes. The guy that hit you, is he still there? Yeah, yeah. He lives over here, right? Probably run a dope house right next door to him. Is he white, black, <laughs> or Hispanic? I don't know what color he is. You call him what you want to call him. What does he look <laughs> to you? Why? I don't know. He looks like one of Jesus' children. He looks <laughs> one, like what? One of Jesus' children. Okay, what's his skin color? I don't know. Okay. I don't see no color. Do you know what color clothes he's wearing? I don't know. The motherfucker in the house. Okay, so we have somebody come see you, okay? <laughs> All right. Goodbye. <laughs> that guy is so in trouble. Yeah, I like him. All of his points were just so valid, though. He's just like, well, what's your medical? He's like, I don't know. I ain't a fucking doctor. I ain't a doctor. That's why I need some motherfucker to come over here. Why you need my phone number if you could come to my house? You got my number. <laughs> you have it. You got my he address. Asked before. Come on. What's he wearing? I don't know. <laughs> he's probably wearing something else now. <laughs> yeah, he's, I don't know. He's in the house. <laughs> uh, Andy in New Hampshire. Andy. Yo. Hey. We get brutalized all the time on these things. We have these cards we have to follow. And you have to follow them, and you feel like a retard asking these guys these questions. You you got the answer. That's how the guy got him. You got my number. Why'd you ask me? Why you ask me? Yeah, he was uh, he was pretty good. He was a little did you belligerent. Catch the one where he said, "I didn't live in an apartment. I live in a town." He goes a townhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he he said town. Oh, and then town he first. House. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, Jesus that's Christ. definitely a really good 911 call, man. Yeah, it's not oh, like, yeah. it's not right, like a, a 24 second call, like where there's this no, one know, main it's, idea. It's like the, just the it, whole body, whole. the whole body of work is Mother, what you're going to look at. Motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Calling a motherfucker. 
I had no fucking doctor. What a disrespectful douchebag. Or nurse. I kind of liked him. <laughs> Did you? You didn't like him? Yeah, you have him over your place. <laughs> I kind of like the like guy. You, you know, in the, in the raw audio, I don't know how old the call is, but uh, in the raw audio, it gives his phone number if you want to try to get, well, a I get a hold of him. <laughs> yeah, like that number is actually working or his yeah. or paid for. Number was disconnected the second he made that call. I need a bambalance. Yeah, get me a bambalance. I need a damn bambalance. I like how they're like, yeah, we definitely need you to go along. The sheriff's department, like, yeah, mm -hmm. I want to go along uh, with this ride. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, hey, the topic I was going to bring up was, uh, did you guys hear about this guy that shot his wife out there in Texas with a thirty-eight, and then uh, calmly calls up uh, nine one one and has no, has basically no mental thought. This guy, the, yeah. I think the guy is relieved. We, we this guy's so relieved. He doesn't even care. He probably knows he's going to prison. Um, but but being <laughs> yeah. married to this woman was worse than killing her and going to prison. That's what this guy is is thinking. It, is it total redneck or what? I mean, the way oh yeah, he sounds a little uh, drunk too. Oh yeah, and he just the way that he he takes care of. Uh, you know, call him 911. He's just, well, I did it. Yeah, we got I, the clip. I yeah, did it. Yeah, we're going to play the clip. Uh, what's the headline? He just, I killed my nag wife. My yeah. nag wife, he says. And, right. Uh, Thanks, and, guys. And, hey, Ant, can you tell people how to punch out correctly again? They don't get it. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Very good. Yeah, you can't punch out after can't you punch out after you hit the ground. Yeah, you got to know if something's going really bad on the show, you punch out before you you go all the way with what you. It's like an air show. Want to talk about? Yeah, a little pilot disappear behind the tree line. Right. All then right. he's punched out <laughs> successfully. His mugshot, by the way, this guy. Yeah. He's an older gentleman. Uh, of course he is. He's had years. He's got a nice smile on his face. He is so relieved. He's like, yeah, I did it. What's it to you? Yeah, I go to prison for the rest of my yeah. life. I don't care. I don't care. Prison I'm hanging out with the guys. Prison rape cannot compare to what I've been through. Yeah, to what he's been through. This is his chance, though, to probably finally hang out with the guys. Like, he probably want to hang out with his friends or something. It was just like, no, you're not going out. So he figures, hey, prison. Bunch he of guys would play her. some cards. He shot her in the gut, too. That's like the yeah. most painful agonizing death well, but it takes a long time to die you're gonna be okay yeah. come on say it <laughs> say the goddamn words you're gonna be okay let's get into the story there's so much here you're about to hear one of the most bizarre 911 calls ever 67 year old Freddie Wilhite called police he calmly told the dispatcher he shot his wife and he even confessed why he did it this is Freddie Wilhite how can I help you? I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Is she still there? Yeah, she's lying on the floor. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she would ridicule me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. <laughs> Sir? Are you Can alive? you believe that? Or are you dead? Will Height surrendered without offering any resistance. He was charged with murder and he's being held on $100,000 bail. As I, calm as, oh, I think someone's at the door. I'll be right yeah. back. Let me see if she's, uh, you alive or are you dead? <laughs> yeah, but you hear it in his voice. Why did you do it? She enticed <laughs> me. Enticed me. My whole life. And then you hear the female reporter just like, can you believe that? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> enticed him. <laughs> Yeah, they just suck on the news. That is definitely that's that's a big word. If if you, the man you're with starts saying you're nagging me, that means like you might want to back off. Yeah, you you're beginning the murderous <laughs> process. <laughs> the process of little circuits clicking together in his brain. Yeah. <laughs> We're not good with emotion and we, we try to solve problems. <laughs> 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 Let's just hear the 911 call again. Here it is. Listen for the part. Are you alive or dead? This is pretty well high. How can I help you? I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Is she still there? Yeah, she's lying on the floor. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she would ridicule me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. Sir? Call ends like that? Isn't that amazing?
Oh, that's great. Are you alive or are he you dead? He sounds so relieved. Yes, when he says enticed me. For my whole entire life. Right. It's like ridiculed. this guy just. You never yeah. do anything with your life. Uh, You're a loser. You're yeah. a bum. Why did I ever marry you? Just And, and he's just like looking at the 38. Uh, I could do this. <laughs> How long do you think he thought about it before he did it? How many years? years? Decades. I would, decades, yeah. right? Decades just laying there. And he waited to the perfect age. To d He's probably going to die during the trial. Yeah. What, what yeah does he, he doesn't care? care. Mm -hmm. You don't care. All right. We're back with the Opie and Anthony show. Bill Burr, Bob Kelly helping us out. Bob Kelly doing a show on 202 this weekend. Make sure you check that out. Friday 9 o'clock, right? Saturday night. Saturday night. 9 o'clock, 9 to 12. All right. We got to get the uh, the long version of this audio clip that we just played before break, the 911 call. We yeah. haven't heard this yet. We're going no. into this cold. He adds a little something extra. I guess. I'm hoping. A little chit chat. Maybe they have the gunshot in this one. Yeah, that'd be nice. Maybe some uh, interaction with the wife and him. Yeah. Maybe she answers him about being alive or dead. Right. <laughs> ah, you Maybe clean up this blood. Oh, how great if she's, she's still, still nagging. nagging. <laughs> <laughs> with the fucking bullet hole. Yeah. <laughs> Don't use that dishcloth. That's my favorite. What are you doing? North Richland Hills 911. That's it. Hello? This is pretty well hot. How can I help you? I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. What address are you at? 8432. Is she still there? Yeah, she's lying on the floor. And what is your name? Pretty well hot. Where's the gun ears. at? What? Where's the gun? How great is it to hear the... Yeah. She's getting all the info. <laughs> what did he say when it first started? He, something like, well, that's that or something. Well, that's what that, yeah. He's like, oh, well, that's that. <laughs> yep. This is what I've been thinking of doing for two decades. Well, that's <laughs> that. That's that. Two decades. Easier than I thought it would be. Got it. Listen. What? Where's the gun? I it's in the closet. What is her name? Donna. Is there anybody else there with you? No. Okay. Why type? Why did you do this? You're reporting. She enticed me, <laughs> and she was uh, ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. Are you coming to call me? Okay, and you're at eighty-four thirty-two. That's it, baby. Okay, I'm going to get somebody. That's it, baby. That's it, baby. Why don't you come on over here? I think I'm going to be free in about three yeah. minutes. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something, doll face. I'm, I'm single now. Might as well start right here. At the rate she's bleeding out, I should be dating in no time, baby. <laughs> I got, baby. A, I got a 38 for you, baby doll. You got a baby. sexy voice. You got a body to match there, <laughs> baby. Those are baby. That's right, baby. All right, toots. <laughs> okay, and you're at... 8432. That's it, baby. Okay, I'm going to get somebody out there. Where in the house are you right now? Well, I'm in the hey. dining room. I don't know if she's dead or not. How long ago did this happen? A few minutes. Okay. I'll see if she's alive. Sir? You're alive. Do what? Oh, show me he said he shot his wife in the stomach. You there? I'm here. There? Uh, sir, I'm here. I think she's dead. Okay. Who, is there anybody else in the house with you? No. Okay. I'm peaceable. It's okay. Okay, sir, it's okay. I understand. I've got I've got help coming up there. I just want to stay on the line with you until they get there. Well, okay, okay. And then I'll go down. I'm sorry? I'll go down. Okay. Okay, you all right? <laughs> wow. And then he's like, you all right? I love how they just decide, all right, yeah, send four units up there. Or do they have a chart? Man. I'll be peaceable. I'll be peaceable. I'll go down. <laughs> I might as well go down. I'll go down. Give me a uh, Diablo burger and a Dr. Pepper Dr. to go. Pepper. Make it snappy. I'm in a goddamn hurry. Thank you, pretty lady. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, nice you lady. Who, you who shall? <laughs> she shot your wife in the belly. How unbelievable is that? Wow. He, She really didn't nag him. 
to that. I like how he goes. He doesn't check vital signs. You lie. No. You're dead. I think, I think she's dead. I but bet maybe he kicked she's her. Unconscious. I bet he yeah. kicked her. I, I, swear, I bet yeah. he kicked her right in the side. Choked her. Just kicked her and she didn't move. She's dead. I <laughs> aim to kill you with it. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go to Don't Canada. Go. Don't go too far now. We only can't pit. shoot a cop. That's an attention getter. Yeah. Let me have a Diablo sandwich of Dr. Pepper. Make it fast. I'm in a goddamn hurry. <laughs> I just shot my wife in the belly. I shot my wife. What we're dealing with here is a complete lack of respect for the law. <laughs> Harley, I'm a peaceable man. Harley Fine from New York City. Kind of sounds like the guy. I earned that curse. I, I shot my wife. I earned that conviction. <laughs> this is the way she wanted it. <laughs> right. Well, she gets it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then someone else, Tom from Maryland. Uh, how great would it be if you heard, blam! Yep, she's dead. <laughs> Just one more yeah, shot. one more shot. One more to the face. <laughs> she wasn't then. She is now. What did he say? That little whisper, though. He said a little stupid. He said he something said, stupid. You stupid. Did you hear that? Uh, but, yeah, I, I wasn't really sure what was going on. A little there. whisper. Just you stupid. We we allow <laughs> oh, okay. we allow one phone call from Canada yeah. every day. This is the one. It's Veronica. Oh. Veronica, what's up? Hi there. Hey. Um. I have the news story of the day. What is I, it? I barely heard it this morning, but the gist of it is um, a farmer killed his wife with a tire iron, and uh, he was caught on video, video saying that he um, was sorry he didn't make her suffer more. Wow. Didn't make her suffer more. And that's all wow. you know yeah. so far? Yeah, well, um, also, there was, uh, supposedly they, ha they had a, or the marriage was on the rocks, and because he, he got a demon computer <laughs> and gained weight. Apparently things weren't going so well. That's what I want to know, is how does it get to that level where it's like, you know you're going to jail. Right. So but why would you just, as bad why? as Why? Because that's a better thing. option in your head. You realize, you know what, I don't give a shit anymore. Jail is better than this this misery I'm in. You know what it is? They probably hear like the stories you telling. Yeah. And then they just like and they lose no matter minds. what, I'm always gonna have to give them money. I don't care. That pride thing, fuck that. But see, here's the difference, and we all we we all feel for Anthony and what he's going through, right? But it, thank God he has enough money to still live a, a very nice life. Uh, we hear the stories from other guys where she takes so much money that you know these guys are now in a one bedroom apartment. They used oh, yeah. to have a huge spread in the country, oh, yeah. and they get the house. Yeah, there's the got to be. They get everything, and 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 after the alimony uh, payments and after the the kids support and all that, they're they're left with nothing for themselves, yeah. and they're living like they're just out of college when yeah, they had granted, a nice granted, life women, for women do not make as much as uh, as a guy does but gradually it's getting closer and closer but those divorce laws are not changing that's what no, I, don't, I don't understand same archaic laws that pretty much say women uh, cannot survive without a man and when they they come out and say you know they want uh, all kinds of uh, uh, rights for this that that's fine but you know equal rights means equal burden too so if a divorce happens you fucking work I'll fucking work and it's, yeah, it's uh, you just get out. It's like when that Beyonce tune, uh, what is that, Independent Women, and they all go fucking crazy. Oh, well, yeah. I, you just go. showed a video of that at your trial. There you maybe, go. Maybe that would help. Well, where's this woman? Where's this independent woman? Who the fuck? Yeah. All right, Veronica, anything else? No, that's all. Love you guys. Punching out. All right, thank Punching you, Punching out. But she had to say that because she's in Canada, Punching so they got to say out. I love that you only take one call a day. <laughs> One call from Canada. Uh, we One. Just, we just started that today. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> we might take two. Yeah, we might. <laughs> hey, I usually ruin the bit. Yeah, I know. Bit I ruiner. It's just an awful bit, so I figured, what the hell? <laughs> you can have that one. <laughs> it's just a routine call at a youth basketball game. But there's nothing routine about the man at the top of the screen protesting the call. Can you see what he's wearing? Well, this closer look shows you it's a man in a penguin costume. 
And at first, the kids were pretty excited because they thought it was a mascot. But that idea, Chris Dowell says, went south when the man began verbally assaulting the young players, even cheering when they fell down. <laughs> Where's Norton? Uh, was Norton doing a gig somewhere? In a fucking That's hilarious. Suit. The guy in a penguin suit, they thought it was a mascot, then they realized that they were the Rams. Yeah. And that's when they realized, wait a minute. It's, well, what the fuck is a penguin doing? It's youth basketball, so they're really young. And that's they're excited. Funny. They think it's the mascot. Oh, my God. That they got together. <laughs> and he's laughing and when they fall down. And he's just mocking yeah, and heckling these just young kids trying to play what basketball. What a little love. <laughs> What are oh. we doing in the penguin voice? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You stupid little kid. Look, he fell. <laughs> There's more to the story. Dowell, a coach on the team catching the abuse, yeah. says the man in costume is a league referee who often let games get too rough. Dowell filed a complaint late in the season, and the referee wasn't assigned to any more games involving his team. Perhaps that's why, once the man was kicked out of the gym on Saturday, he served up choice words to Dowell, who was standing at the end of the bench. He uh, he um, made some comments. Comments to me that um, couldn't shouldn't be said around kids. The city's investigating the incident, so there are no judgments yet for what happened in this gymnasium. But there will be a guiding principle. Uh, the bottom line is here that the leagues are for the kids, and and uh, um, we're here to uh, provide for them and protect them if if need be. Protection, even if that man you see in the door wearing the penguin suit was joking or not. That's just fun, dude. <laughs> I, I, would, I would laugh. So if I started doing the pen going, ah, you suck, you little rug rat. You're a little brat. How to be drunk. <laughs> a little kid falls. You drop the ball, faggot. Dude, that's just another one of those, like, how do you arrive at that moment? Like, literally, yeah. I yeah. can see just flipping out, driving up there. <laughs> Fuck you. You suck. This yeah. guy went somewhere. Yeah. Where do you, where would you get a penguin he suit? He tried on costumes and decided in his dopey brain that yeah. the penguin yeah. suit would be the best yeah. one. Not a moose. For the job. Not a right. yeah. moose. Yeah. Yeah. Not the vibe. I'm trying on a rabbit. Your mother. Uh, you, let's you, see. Right. A penguin. Rabbit's too cute. <laughs> right. Because, yeah, penguin is perfect. Penguin's perfect. How I'll much is in. that? Do you take credit? Yeah, that probably came into play. Credit cards, right? Huh? He wanted to be a lion, but yeah. it was too much money. Yeah. Had a drive <laughs> there. How much for the penguin? 40 bucks. 350 uh, for I, the I lion suit. Yeah. Fuck, I can only afford the penguin suit. <laughs> All right. It was either that or be uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, lass. Uh, he drove there, though, like with that in his head. Like, he didn't just end up there in a penguin suit. You think he put it on in the parking lot, or he actually had the bottom half of the suit on in the car? Big and just a head next to him on the passenger seat. In a seat. bag, and he goes into the bathroom and changes, puts his regular clothes in the vent in the ceiling. I don't know what at no point is there a voice in the head going, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Jessica's a penguin. Let it go. Let it so go. So you can curse it, little kid. his mind, it all makes sense. Youth basketball. Oh, this this is, was his moment. I need to do this. Cut to him later in a motel room with a hooker and a bottle of gin. She's wearing the hat. <laughs> She's wearing that penguin head, She's fucking him. gutted on the bed. <laughs> oh, That'd Jesus. be great if he called in for that life-changing moment. <laughs> if he called the morning of that. Yeah. Hey, what are you about me to do? Ah, put on a penguin suit. Yeah. Scream an eight-year-old. Uh, uh, sure <laughs> you are. Eight-year-old sure sure you you are. penguin suit. I'm fully armed, too, but I'm not sure if I'm going to yeah. shoot yet. I just want to protect <laughs> myself. Yeah, let's go to Steve on Long Island. Steve. Yeah. Hey, Steve. Hey, What's Steve. going on, bros? What's up, buddy? Oh, I just wanted to tell... Uh, I wanted to send a nephew out to my freaking ex... Gave her a million brand new car, paid off the freaking house, paid for her education, and I had to live in a basement apartment for a year, and I still don't have a freaking divorce decree. Thank you. Bye bye now, and wow. see you later. That sounds wonderful. See, See, he's angry. That's that's Tim. That's the people I really feel sorry for. I do feel sorry for you. Yeah, but he sounded like he was at the end. He went. No, but he's lost everything. He had a great life and obviously making good money, and he lost it all. I remember what. Still not good enough. Yeah, and if you leave, there should be definitely some sort of. But it should be more equal as far as. Please. You know what sucks is that it's always the case when the girl, the next guy the girls meet, doesn't have as much money as her, and he's living off of your money. He's using some of your cash. To go to the movies, to get a new jacket. Yeah, she could do whatever she wants. To with pay it. the bills. Yeah. When he wanted internet, uh, Wi Fi in the room, she, I got it, don't worry. No, really, Anthony has it. Yep. They're almost like enticing them to go out and, and, and meet a loser. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah, they meet can a go loser with a big cock. That's all you need. You don't need a fucking breadwinner. I, I, love, I love that. How long's your cock? That's all she's got to fucking ask anybody. <laughs> Listen yeah. Listeners really helping out. I got to interrupt Hackett from D.C. Video of the penguin guy. Got Beautiful. the link. 
got to see what this guy's nice. all about. Uh, when I was when I was a, a, a little tater, of course, my parents uh, got divorced, and uh, I remember the first time I went over to Dad's place after the divorce. Ugh. It was just the worst. He was living in like this little apartment. And and it was decorated with like shit I think I made in school at the time. So it was like a little a uh, uh, clay dinosaur that I had made, <laughs> and that and, yeah he was doing great. He's like fucking chick. Some chick would come out and she's drunk and hey you know half naked. Ah, oh, this is your boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like guys just using this as a That's fuck not, pad. It's like but out of a fucking she, Burt Reynolds movie. Oh, it was awful. She comes out wearing a penguin suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, penguin suit. <laughs> But it was just like, oh, look, now he's got to live in the Look at this little kitchenette. He had like a kitchenette. With this, oh, yeah, with, the, with the, those the half a stove. Yeah, it's yeah, half a two stove burners. and a sink that's like fucking six he inches by six burners. inches. Yeah, it was just two single little... Single file burners. Yeah. Two single file burners. You, you can make soup and uh, and coffee. That's yeah, it. a little refrigerator. It was tiny, and I was a little kid at the time, and even I realized it was little. Oh, shit. Did you have a, a percolator? Like, yeah, probably a percolator. But it was just the smallest place. It's like, oh, well, you don't live in a nice house. Well, how come we live in the house and you live in this place? You know, oh, because your mom's a bitch or something. You know, yeah. You know, they always try to kind of pawn it off on the other one. I don't mean to laugh, at it. I'm sorry. Than is giggling over here. It's a huge penguin suit. <laughs> not even an in-shape penguin. Dude, he's just standing up. There's not many people in the stands because it's oh, youth basketball to so begin he's, with. Uh, he's real obvious. It's going to be a little while now? All right. Yeah, it's very obvious. He just stands up and... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, it's mm-hmm. gonna take a second. Yeah, it's uh, it's like a tiny high school gym. So there's 20 people in the bleachers' oh, tops, no. and it, this one guy in a penguin suit. <laughs> I'm fucking thinking. It's not like they would be hard be, to spot. This is gonna be great. Here's the question: Why didn't one of the fathers just, you know, take him out? Because he's the knockout mascot. penguin man. He can't really fight. You really can't fight a mascot. For one thing, if he's tough and you get your ass kicked by a penguin, <laughs> yeah, then you look. Really I ran bad. into that on that tour guys when I was going to fight that turtle. I was like, you know what? Do I really want to roll around with a guy in a turtle suit? Right. Because if Plus he beats it's, my ass, it's it's me getting my ass kicked by a muppet. It's the no win scenario. Here we go. Yeah. Here's the video. All right, so a kid just fell down, and now the penguin stands up. And he's was he like, pointing at him and laughing? <laughs> yeah, with his little penguin hand. Can we link this uh, Topi and Anthony? Sure. Dot com. Oh my Jesus! God. What was the guy? Look, 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 it's youth basketball. You know that's, what? Like, yes. that's like twelve year olds. Now, right. having seen this, this guy's a genius. I take back everything. You that like I said. him now? Oh, he's great. And he didn't bother with the mask part of the penguin suit either. Oh, he didn't have no, the, the heads off. He wanted to preser- not preserve his anonymity. No, he's a headless penguin <laughs> mocking children. That's funny. <laughs> and reminding us of global warming. This guy's right. like on a couple of different not fronts here. It is. So, uh, we ha- oh, we have the audio of that guy. The Entice Me guy? We got to play this just because it, it was uh, referenced today. It's uh, one of our favorite stories. This guy just had it with his wife for many, many years and, oh, just, yeah. and shot her and killed her and then decided to call 911 and tell uh, the fine people what he did. And it, uh, just just the casualness of the whole thing is just amazing. Here's how it went down. This is pretty well hot. How can I help you? I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Is she still there? Yeah, she's lying on the floor. Why did you do this? She enticed me. <laughs> she would ridicule me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. Sir? Oh, she enticed me. You could hear it all summed up in yeah, that yeah. one line, that that whole marriage. She enticed me. What did he say at the end? Did he say she's dead? Are you, are you, are you alive? Yeah, or, yeah. or are you dead? Or are you... And the, the part we didn't play. Then he comes back to the phone and goes, "Yep, she's dead." I think she did. Uh, for some reason, it's it's there's a long version and a short version. That oh. was the short version. The long oh. one's like two two over two minutes. Oh, it's, all right. Yeah, we just wanted a little taste of that. She that, enticed me. And we got yeah. an update on that guy. So after a year and a half, what happened to him? He was sentenced and uh, found guilty and sentenced to 30 years in prison this summer. 
He will be eligible eligible for parole in 15 years, and he is almost 70. So he'll be that's 85 life. when he that gets That sucks, man. He says, she could have enticed him his entire life. you got to get some kind of confession before you shoot these broads. you got to get a camera rolling going, look. Did you or did you not entice me my entire life? He'll get out. Maybe of, it helps you a little bit. Get you a few years off your sentence. Get out of prison, carve his name in a beam, uh, <laughs> and hang himself. I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Stupid Brooks. He's, he's like trying to, to that point. He's probably trying to spin it like, look, if I live to be 100, the next 15 out of 30, I'll do here if I don't have to deal with that bitch. <laughs> yeah. 85 up. She enticed me, and my hands hurt sometimes <laughs> when I work at the foodway. <laughs> she must have been a real you-know-what, because now, you know, he's in prison getting it in the pooper. <laughs> He'd rather take it in the pooper than live with her anymore. I run the prison <laughs> library. <laughs> <laughs> this <is> dumb Brooks. <laughs> and Brooks' uh, prison library stunk. He was there from 1905, mm. and he was responsible for the prison library at Shawshank. Yeah. And, and uh, it stunk. <laughs> And then Dufresne came in and just, Dufresne came just, in and like just wrecked his whole his whole bit. His whole gig was just you know throwing some uh, books on a cart and wheeling them down the prison aisles. Here's Louis L'Amour. Here's the magazines, Time and Life. They weren't even organized. So you got your National Geographic. Geographic over here, and then Dufresne like fixes it up into a, a library any city would love to have. It actually institutes the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stupid Brooks, go hang yourself, you old feeble-minded douche. <laughs> Brooks was here. Good. Oh, dangle, you idiot. <laughs> if, I was, if I was library guy, I would just rip out uh, the last ten pages of every single book in the library without telling anyone. All the convicts. Every what happened. book. The best prison story ever was Billy Connolly, the, the, the comedian. You guys know Billy Connolly. Is, uh, when he was in, and he said that in Scotland or whatever, I think he, he said in jail what they do is when, when it's a mystery... They 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 circle the name of the guy who did oh, it right. throughout yeah. the entire book. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to go. That's even oh, better. Damn. That's even better. He One of those that, dumb John Grisham <laughs> novels where they try to trick you the entire book. He'll just circle the name. Circle the name every time it comes up in the book. <laughs> what? At, well, they're prisoners. Of course, they're asses. Yeah, they can't live without robbing or oh, murdering somebody. That's a funny gag. Yeah, take take the pleasure out of something like reading. Is that yeah. hilarious? So they that's, can just shank people instead. That's one of the better ones I've heard. Oh, Billy Connolly makes me laugh. Speaking of old broads, there's a 57 year old lady in the paper that's going to have twins. Anthony, how yeah. about? How do they make this one work? I mean, uh, is it a natural child thing happening uh, here? Or, it, or it's probably the drugs. They give them all kinds me, of drugs. Because these selfish whores want to be mothers. Yep. This selfish whore. I always knew I wanted a, uh, wanted children. At 57 years old, career gal is now ready to start a family. Career gal. That's it right there, by the way. Face it. You have reached the second plateau. It's what? over. You know, you, now it's just selfish. Alita St. James is expecting the best gift of her life for her 57th birthday this week. Newborn twins. St. James, a motivational speaker and the eldest sister of guardian angel leader Curtis Sliwa. Did you read that? I didn't know that. She's a, the sister? Yeah. It's set to shatter conventional limitations of childbirth tomorrow when she is slated to deliver a baby boy and girl at Mount Sinai Hospital just three days shy of her birthday. Oh, a kid's uh, been in a womb that's probably like leather, old dried up like a saddle, <laughs> like saddle leather. Oh, she can see through in vitro fertilization, and she will become the oldest American woman to give birth to twins. What an ab oh. You that want your career? Have your career. You want a yeah. career? Have a career. You want to be a mom? Be a mom. Make a decision. Do you know how awful it's going to be for that kid? What's she, 57? 57. Picture 13 years old. You got to take your, your mom to the, the PTA or the, the parent ch teacher conference, and a 70 year old mother comes in the door. 70. If you're still alive at all. Your kid's 13. You're 70. You know the other kids are going to be making fun of you, and it's going to crush the poor little kid. Yep. Here comes old grandma, old droopy titted mom coming in. And and there you are, there you are bringing your mom in, probably on a maybe even a walker. She'll have a walker coming into school. And then there's the other hot moms from the other kids. The, your child will be jealous of the hot mom. Well, yeah, I mean, fifty-seven's not that old. 
You know, it, it, it really isn't. Yes, you know? it is. Well, no. I mean, she's looking at this like, yeah, I'm 57. I can handle this. But, uh, you know, a quick 10 years go by. And like what Anthony's talking about here, then it's a whole nother game. I had the hot mom in school. You were the one with the hot I mom? I was the one with the hot mom. And my mom dressed like a slut. She had, uh, <laughs> she, she would, I, I used to like whine and cry for her to be the, one of the uh, field trip mothers. You know, the mothers that go along on the field trips? Uh, because my friends were just, they were flabbergasted. She would dress like in, in white knee high go go boots, put pigtails in her hair, halter tops and shorts. And she's on the bus and like, you know. That's how she was dressed this summer for that, uh, yeah, that party. Yeah, of course she does that. For your sister. <laughs> 65 years old or whatever she is. She's still doing she that. She's very solid. I met her once. Aunt's mom is still hot. Very solid. She's a gym rat. Your mom she's is. She's an animal. Smoking, man. She's an animal. But back. <laughs> but <laughs> Sorry. Back then, when she was, you know, she was in her uh, mid-20s, I guess. When, when, uh, or well, you mid, had a mid, young to mom. Late, mid to late 20s. You had a young mom yeah. growing up, right? You were... And. It, she was the hot, you know, she was hot. I had the hot mom. And it was cool because, you know, the, the all my friends and stuff would be like, oh, your mom is so pretty and everything. And it was kind of, you know, something to be proud of. And he, this woman is going to be the laughing stock. She's going to make her kid the laughing stock. You know how embarrassing it is? I knew kids that had, like, really old parents. It's It's embarrassing for the kid. She can't do anything. Go to a parent, uh, a parent student, like, outing. One of those things, and it, it, she's gonna be sitting there, nodding off with oxygen and a walker, <laughs> bedpan under her. Ugh. She'll be seventy-five when her kids uh, graduate high school. It's selfish. 75. Look at Tony Randall, that old bastard. Had those kids and then drops dead. I know all those people were applauding, like, "Oh, good for That's you, Tony. great Tony. Good for you." You know, he wants to be a dad to a little kid. And those kids are now what, five, six years old, and yeah. they don't understand why daddy's dead already. We'll never know the the father. What a what a selfish, selfish thing to do. Eef. All right, uh, adopt a kid if you, at least. Yeah, adopt some mongoloid. Yeah, take in a little black boy or something and <laughs> touch its smooth skin. Well, she says something about the adoption thing here. Oh, uh, she does. The reason that I want to carry these children rather than adopting them is that I knew that I could uh, give them while they were in the uterus a tremendous amount of love, a tremendous amount of support. I wanted to give them that start. Oh. I don't think of myself with a number. I don't think, oh, I'm going to be 60. I think I'm going to take these kids to school, she added. Yeah, sure. You probably got to sew the thing up like uh, one of those turkeys after you put the stuffing just to hold the kid in for term. I'm ready. Ready to fall out with her uterus. I'm ready, she said with great determination, resting her swollen frame against the living room wall. Ugh. Oh, man. You kind of like that, though, don't you? Because you like pregnant and you like them older, too. No, I think hope is... he digs the older. Oh, chick. he does. He's a weirdo. <laughs> He's a weirdo. <laughs> I like the. I have an older woman fetish, but that was when I was younger. Now the now that's a problem. I got to get rid of that fetish because, well, you know, we're getting up there now. So now for that fetish to happen, I got to be into like I don't know, fifty year olds. Never liked older women. I'm talking when I was like eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and I saw the mothers in their like early thirties. That was a major turn on. Even as high as forty. Yeah. So I got to get rid of that fetish, obviously. Yeah, let's Birth say... canal looks like the Indiana Jones ride at Disney. <laughs> Kid will come toppling out of there, big boulder chasing him. <laughs> hey, Bill, what's up? Bill, you still there? Hey, yeah. All right, let's go. Hello, Bill. Uh, I teach uh, kindergarten in a Philly suburb. Yeah. Philly, how about those eagles? How about those eagles? Yeah, well... Whatever, uh, go ahead. We got, we got old bags coming through that like you wouldn't believe, man. In kindergarten, I, huh? I had a mom uh, last year. She retired while her kid was in kindergarten, and she still had a three-year-old. But what they do is they, they do their careers, and they get a bunch of money, and then they get a nanny to come and take care of the kid. And they take the kid out for a little while for, like, a walk or something. Well, you and know, nanny, it's definitely does all the heavy lifting. It's definitely the new thing. People are having kids a lot later in life. But... It's the drugs. They're able to do that in vitro. They're able to give them drugs, and uh, they could have these kids out of their selfish, for, for these selfish reasons. Well, that's the problem. That's why this 57-year-old bag is having twins. I've seen old old bags with triplets. And, man, they don't have the energy to take care of those Of kids course they don't. They don't have the energy to take care of them or to do what's necessary to, like, raise a healthy kid. Oh. You want to be able to interact with your child, not not be a, a mess sitting there in a chair. 
Because you can't yeah. go out there. Ah, what a what a selfish what a selfish thing to do. Well, yeah. a lot of these a lot of these women have this thing where it's so hip, and they think that any woman that wants to be a mother is like a cornball or submissive to men. She's like, mm -hmm. oh, I want my career. I'm not going to be a slave like that. And then they realize that they're unfulfilled whores by the time they're sixty. And like, gee, maybe being a mom wasn't such a degrading, awful thing. Let me try doing that. Yeah, let now. me take a whack at it now at sixty. Yeah, that's it. Their career left them unfulfilled. Yeah. What, your two cars in the garage didn't quite bring you the satisfaction you thought it would, you self-centered pigs? <laughs> I ran out of air. So I saw that. <laughs> I can completely <laughs> identify with that problem, Jim North. Oh, I knew I was running out of air quick with that one. I <laughs> want to announce I'm going to be a father. <laughs> your face turned red and everything. I can't believe it. This this dick, Nikki D's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy oh, yeah. rules. It's like, come on. Is this the news story or? Yeah, yeah. This guy time. fucking rules. He set up a restaurant across the street from Nikki D's called Nikki D's. Yeah, McDonald's is right across the street. He's using what? The same the same colors. Same colors and oh. He's pretty much got the same menu, and he's and he's trying to tell everyone that he's not ripping off me. Like, no, I'm not ripping it off. It's Nicky D's. The the sign for the restaurant. Yeah. The N looks like a chopped off M. Yeah, yeah. It's the so half. It the looks McDonald's like the golden logo. arches. He's gonna get sued. Yeah, huh? a little yeah, bit. Well, yeah, probably. Steven S is punching back. Hey, oh, my friend sells the wine I left for you. The point of it was that if you liked it, I'd get you more, you fuck. <laughs> from now on, it's Snapple and vodka uh, for you. Steven S. St Steven Scheister from Bayshore. <laughs> <laughs> He's just... Okay. Here's the story on Nikki D's. Uh, a McDonald's in Detroit has a beef with the local competition. Ew. The restaurant name Nick. See, you get it, Jimmy? Because yeah, he's got a beef. They oh. sell hamburgers, so you know it's Ugh. got a beef because yuck. Beef yeah, burgers. Nikki D's. Nikki D's. Burger. Beef. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, look, look at that. <laughs> it's sign. Dude, it's <laughs> what the N. Is absolutely the McDonald's M. Jimmy, it's not... on the end edge of the sign, so it looks like it just is chopped off. Jimmy, I'm gonna do it because you're not gonna do it. What a jerk! <laughs> this a guy's a jerk. jerk. Uh, a McDonald's in Detroit has a beef with the local competition. The restaurant named Nicky D's Coney Island says it's not the same. But the yellow and red interior and similar name is not sitting well with the McDonald's across the street. The famous franchise is not buying it. They've set over their lawyer with a stern warning of trademark infringement. The owner says Mickey D's beef patties are no competition to his corned beef. <laughs> ah, at Nicky D's. That's, uh... Sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, it does sound a little yeah. familiar. I think we have some audio of the manager of Nicky D's. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Being a McDonald's people, we got this little misunderstanding. Hmm? See, they're McDonald's. I'm McDowell's. Huh? They got the golden arches. Mine is the golden arcs. I see they got the Big Mac. I got the Big Mick. We both got two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, and onions. But they use a sesame seed bun. My buns have no seeds. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the manager of Nikki D's. That's from a movie. Uh, Where is Hakeem? Take me to the Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> what? That douche. What an asshole. What an asshole. You know, I waited. Yeah. I waited oh, for. I watched that movie and waited for that line. Really? And he never says it. He doesn't even say it. No, in the movie. he never says it in the movie. Where is Hakeem? <laughs> he does take say me it. to the Waldorf Astoria. No, you know no, he doesn't. Yes, he does. I think he asks where Hakeem is, mm -hmm. but then where's Hakeem? But then he never. I don't think he ever follows it up with the Waldorf Astoria. No, ever. he doesn't. Because really? I, I was waiting. Oh, that, what, that guy, and the stupid news anchor left him out hanging. Oh, yeah. Left him hanging out there, whatever. Didn't want to hear anything. Yeah. Oh, I love this. A group, uh, it seems a group of teenagers working at a Minnesota nursing home, abused and sexually... <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Just got, he just got kicked off again, didn't he? Listen to the replay later today. You'll hear a noise that can only be described as Jimmy attempting to, to, to take a piece of his iPhone 
<laughs> into his teeth. He did tried. he bite it? Not only did he bite it. I can't it, tell you. His teeth have got to hurt now. No, no I can't tell you oh the God. urge I have to break this. I can't tell me, you the urge your, I have. Give me your fucking phone. To break it. No, as soon as I get the Blackberry, which I'm hearing shit about the storm. Uh. Uh, you don't go and get the first thing. I'm still with, I'm still with this version of the, 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 the BB. And then I'll the move BB. on. BB. Yeah, the Blackberry. Oh. The Blackberry. Oh. He actually bit it though and went like crazy, dude. <laughs> Jesus, Jimmy. Dude, it just Not hit me. The rage. Try to take a piece. This, but again, that rage that just hit me for this phone is why I don't own a fucking pistol. <laughs> I, honest to God, I'm not even kidding. It's yeah. why I could never ever own one. You would just start firing. Into the, I would shoot the phone, <laughs> and I would funny. yell at it. Jimmy, let me see. <laughs> yell at it. There's a couple things I could do with this thing for. I you. already know what uh, I'm gonna do to it. I already know. As soon as I get another service that doesn't suck like this fucking. Thing I was robbed for, I'm gonna take a shit on it and film it. <laughs> I will shit on the phone. <laughs> but Jimmy, that's a famous phone now because it's the one that is featured in your book, I Hate Your Guts. Yeah, yeah I give the iPhone a fucking beating. If it's shit on, it'll be really famous. I just put it online and have people buy the famous phone that was featured in I Hate Your Guts <laughs> by yes. best selling author Jim Jimmy Norton. Jimmy Norton. Jim Norton. So I'm sorry I interrupted you with my story. That's okay. Yeah. Plus bangs. Uh, it seems that a group of teenagers working at a Minnesota nursing home abused and sexually humiliated elderly residents suffering from Alzheimer's d disease and dementia. Uh, the six young female caregivers were uh, named yesterday in criminal complaints. Uh, they only named two of them here. One that's 19, uh, Brianna Wait, how did they get and, caught, though? and Ashton, did they, did 18 they... and 19. Uh, they're named in the complaints, and since they're not minors, they, they put their names out there. And they also put their photographs out. One girl's all right. You'd throw her a fucking after a few. The other girl is gorgeous. Yeah? She's yeah. blonde. Uh, she's wearing like a little. What is she wearing? Like a little, like a like a hockey jersey. It's like a jersey, yeah. Uh, she would definitely, if I was uh, residing at the old folks' home, I would like to see uh, her coming by uh, with uh, some, you know, caregiving. And uh, apparently, they were naughty, naughty girls. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the nursing room residents were spat upon spanked, improperly touched, and tormented by the teenagers earlier this year. Excerpts of the uh, misdemeanor complaints can be found below, and that's where um, we get into some of the uh, shenanigans. Uh, one of the girls allegedly poked one resident's breasts, spit into the mouth of another elderly person, and, quote, put her bare butt in the face of of a good Samaritan Society resident, identified oh. only as S.W. <laughs> oh. oh, dude, man, stinky wig, <laughs> Wait a smiling wickedly. <laughs> <laughs> these, these girls gave these guys something to wake up for every day. Uh, Larson, who is, uh, let's see, uh, left, and Larson is above right. Okay, uh, oh, the hot one is the one that put her ass on the the guy's face, and then the other one, Larson once inserted her finger into a resident's rectum, spit water on another uh, vulnerable adult, and would deliberately bathe a resident in a rough manner so the elderly man would get an erection. <laughs> oh, where's the problem? Where is the problem? <laughs> She's bathing him roughly, probably just punching his old dick. You're smacking it? Yeah. And giving he, it some smacks. And it's uh, it's old dick too, man. I mean she must she must be <laughs> fucking good. Yeah. That, that probably hasn't fucking... been hard and she's taunting they're sexually taunting these old codgers. After receiving an initial notice of suspected uh, abuse of elderly residents and vulnerable residents suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia, a uh, good Samaritan, blah blah blah. Uh, part of the investigation. And to, to employees. Why is this highlighted? There's really nothing, nothing there that I really <laughs> care about. Oh shit! Oh Jesus! Okay, don't look. Don't. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> That's the newspaper being thrown into the garbage can. It's the only thing I can throw without breaking something. I'm not going to break anything. Give me your phone. I'm in the middle of reading a fucking MySpace message. 
where a girl is talking about the fact that I have a nice sized cock and it kicks me off the fucking. Holy Maybe shit! Maybe the iPhone doesn't approve of your uh, of your little. What is the thing that it says when it kicks you off? Nothing. Black and then home screen. Anybody out there, if you want to go out and buy this thing, go right ahead. Anthony loves his. Anthony loves his, I but I'm telling you, more why. and more yeah. people. Louis C.K. is an Apple fanatic. Yes. Hated it. Yeah. I love Mac. Hate it. My manager Jonathan loves everything Mac. Fucking hates it. But Anthony, this is why businesses it. use the BlackBerry, because people yeah, in business I, have to get shit done. Ooh, I got the BlackBerry. Attaboy. I don't have bad experiences with my. Um, now you've been lucky, though. You're, you're the I've exception. Been very lucky, yeah. That's how I feel. Very lucky. Back to the hotness. Yes. Uh, one night, um, let's see. While uh, the girls were putting E F to bed, Brianna uh, stated, "Watch this." She then spit into the resident's mouth. Mm. See, Jimmy turned on. Uh, Brianna had a cavalier attitude about the residents. A cavalier mm -hmm. attitude. They would um, spank one of the residents, CK. <laughs> oh, Louis. <laughs> uh, uh, and then uh, they would laugh, and the girls would keep doing it. They would play with the gentleman's cane, riding it around like a horse, and spank CK on the buttocks with it. And uh, Ash Ashton admitted that she patted uh, CK's butt. What's the problem? Everyone you know is dead. Yeah, this, this, this. this is sexy. They should, um, they should open up some kind of business. Uh, let's see. Ashton would rub vigorously on residents' um, genital areas. To sexually arouse them. She recalls that Ashton and Brianna talked about doing these type of things to residents on four or five occasions with uh, the other girls. They would rub the guy's dicks really hard and fast and give them hard-ons. <laughs> it's so hot. That is hysterical. Dude, the hot one's the one that spit in the mouth? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that rules. Her, Filthy girl. I love it. Not so much with the spitting, Jimmy. Dude, Dude th so that's much. that's just hot now because it's just stupid old people and hot chicks that are degenerates. The vigorous uh, cock rubbing, all right. The spitting, not so much. Could you imagine? You probably would lay there going, I've died. <laughs> right. This is my reward. I finally got my just rewards. I was good. And I went to heaven because this has to be heaven. I'm being jacked off by a young high school girl. This is wonderful. Where's my the bright light and my family? I don't see them, but I have to be dead. I hope my wife isn't here because I want these hand jobs a lot since I'm dead. How did they get caught? Yeah, who ratted them? And then, uh, let's see, it was told, Brianna inserted, okay, uh, Ashton inserted her finger into one of the residents' rectum. All right, let's take this uh, slowly. Like, the spitting, eh, the vigorous cock rubbing, yes. Finger in the butt, you're old. What are you doing, Ant? You into that or what? If I'm that old? And all of a sudden, one of these teenage girls... An 18-year-old or 19-year-old girl there. wants to do whatever she wants. <laughs> what do you do? Care. You come like a super soaker. Oh, it's it. You Your prostate wakes up from the fucking grave and goes, what? Well, I got to produce something? Before you're up to the first knuckle, I have fucking shot silly string to the door. You give your roommate a cum bed. <laughs> a cum shower. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess you got to take the finger, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and then it was stated that Brianna, she's the hot one, put her bare butt in SW's face. Ooh! So she pulled her pants and her little panties down, and took her little white bare bottom and shoved it into this old dude's face. How did the, she uh, make a little fuck, stinker? Yeah. How the fuck oh. did did this uh, guy not die? Well, it wasn't like he was, she was smothering. I'm talking about, like, oh, you're that like old and there's a, a, a 17, 18-year-old. Have a heart attack. Little ass in your face? Yeah, I'm oh. talking the heart attack, of course. That old tongue just sticking out <laughs> trying to reach the asshole. His <laughs> 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 oh. fucking teeth are drooping out because his <laughs> mouth is open so wide. <laughs> trying to push his tongue out there. Uh, a little further. This is frustrating. <laughs>
So is Brianna was the sexy one. Brianna, sexy one, bare ass in the face. Mm -hmm. uh, Brianna would also uh, poke residents in the breast and genitals and laugh. <laughs> uh, Brianna would poke JJ, <laughs> JJ, yeah. in the breast, tap her on the forehead, and put her fingers in her mouth until she would scream. <laughs> She stated that uh, she witnessed uh, Brianna hit resident R.M. in the genitals so he would scream. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scenario. To... Ow! R.M., she hit Ralph Macchio in the genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miyagi! <laughs> smacking him in the nuts. Oh. Uh, also, Brianna would put her gloved hands in the resident's nose and mouth to make them scream because she thought it was funny. <laughs> She's pretty much threatening the old codgers with suffocation and then would stop it and laugh because uh, she thought it was funny. Holy um, shit. Uh, the girls started talking about the incidents with residents at uh, someone's house and later in a car. Um, one of the residents stated the girls, or one of the kids stated the girls talked on 7 to 12 occasions. Uh, one of the younger girls stated that they openly discussed things among themselves. She stated the girls were confident they would not get caught because, quote, residents did not have their minds. <laughs> they assumed that if these residents went somewhere and said, did she put a finger up my ass? No one believed They'd them. go, you're crazy. No, Why would this hot chick put a finger up your ass? I was handing him fish sticks. He doesn't know any better anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's just confused at everything. Why would I do that? That's Fucking, ridiculous. Yeah. Giving him a sponge bath, and the yeah. guy gets a boner. You know, what's what's? Uh, it's not my fault. Um, let's see. Uh, Brianna, uh, uh, Bra Brianna, um, M R W was told by Brianna. Okay, that's one of the kids that she hocked a loogie in uh, her throat. And spit into EF's mouth without holding EF's mouth, mouth open. Wow. She said she it. heard that Brianna uh, and Ashton spit into residents' mouths because they were upset. The residents were drooling all over. So they were drooling all over. So to, to show them, they spit in their mouths. It's like, you want to drool? I'll give you something to fucking drool. I'll spit in your mouth. Resident uh, SW got angry, so they hit her in her boob. <laughs> MRW stated that Ashton um, and Brianna poked uh, resident SW in the breast to get her mad. She stated that resident told them to stop, but the girls would just laugh and keep poking her in the breast. Um, they would touch residents uh, to make them mad, uh, some of the gentlemen. Um, it was also stated that resident K.H. was touched or rubbed by Brianna and as a result became hard. Brianna's a hot one, by the way. Mm -hmm. She's rubbing. No, they're both hot. Look rubbing. At the, look at these two. Let me All see right, the other they one. They are both hot. <laughs> Holy mother of fuck. Oh, my God. The other one's a lot sexier than I thought. That's much better than that first picture. They're both wearing their stupid Al Albert Lee, whatever, sweatshirt. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm going to pinch my shaft. Dude. They fucking jerked off these old guys through their fucking little... <laughs> oh, my God. Hottest story ever. Uh, let's see. It was stated that they were just trying to get a rise out of him, as in sexually teasing. They were sexually teasing this old motherfucker. Can we get him on the phone? And got him a hard on. Gave him a fucking hard on. Let's get him on the phone. Oh, wonderful. That's awesome. Again, they, while they're doing this, they would be laughing the whole time. So what happened? The, the guys were talking about this, and then someone heard that. Yeah, I guess somebody rat him out, ratted him out. Because for the most part, I think uh, pretty much every old dude out there would would deal with this, no problem. Yeah, of course. The I don't think it was the, the old channel, was a little, you know, a little degrading. But then you get the ass in your face, you know. Wow. Would you, would you take the poking of the genitals, Jimmy? I'd request it. <laughs> I'd consider it a blessing. One of the uh, one of the residents was abused by Brianna and Ashton. Yeah. Um, they would touch his private area to make him mad. He would get an erection. <laughs> how how is that? How is that getting anyone mad? I don't get mad. 
Do you get mad at your erection? Hey, oh, stop you. rubbing my dick like that. I have an erection. Now look what you did. Oh, I haven't had one in years. Yeah, we should get the old people on the phone. That is just fucking hot. Why? They're crazy. Aunt Reed <laughs> slower. I'm almost done. Almost done. That's Ricky in Texas. Uh, at least they didn't get charged for it. They're not getting charged. They got some kind of charges for um, some lame charge abuse of uh, some yeah. elderly residents. They should be charged with getting a raise. Here you are. One Oof. count of assault. Oh, a raise. <laughs> a boo. One count of assault in the fifth degree. Caregiver of a vulnerable adult. Uh, you're assaulting in the fifth degree caregiver. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see, one year in jail and or a fine of no more than $3,000. That's uh, that's it. We should pay the fine so uh, they could come in and poke people in the genitals. Uh, caregiver defined between blah, blah, blah. Uh, intentionally inflict or attempt to inflict bodily harm upon a vulnerable adult. That doesn't sound like um, bodily harm. Mm -hmm. That could be defended. Let's go to Brian. Hey, giving the guy a boner. Brian in Montana. Brian. Morning, gentlemen. Brown. I wanted, to, wanted to state the obvious conclusion here. These guys aren't mad about what's being done to them. They're being they're mad about what's being not not being done to them. Mm -hmm. These girls aren't finishing anything off. They're no happy ending. Get them started, and yeah, no happy ending at all. I would just fuck, I would just fucking grab my dick the second she let go to be a tease, and just come all over her. <laughs> I would just fucking shoot all over her arms. Go ha ha. Now the, the, cum, right. the cum's on you. <laughs> I made cumsies all over you, you dummy. What do you think your cum's going to look like when, when you get older? Oh, no. What's it going to look like? You cottage think? cheese. The cottage, just, just cottage cheese. Big fucking oversized petrified sperm cells. What will the color look like? Waiting around in a brownish fucking liquid oh, from, your, from your fucking prostate. Like an old backed up toilet. Probably, gonna, probably looks similar to chewing tobacco. <laughs> oh, God, like spit from fucking... <laughs> it's fucking chaw spit. Well, how how uh, old do you have to be to get into this joint? Really? Um, hopefully 40. I guess you just need <laughs> some type of dementia oh, that means or I gotta Alzheimer's. I got to wait three years. Yeah, some kind of dementia or, or Alzheimer's sure. or something. Can't you fake that to get in? Uh, these chicks should be in Ant's Castle. Yeah, where are uh, these caregivers? I don't uh, care. Let's go to Footer. Uh, Footer's good for one or two. Footer, what do you got? Hey, what's up, boys? Hey, I was reading that uh, one of the, the residents with the initials J.N. used to request logs on the chest on a regular basis. Oh, oh <laughs> J.N. J.N., huh? That's wow. odd, dude, because those are my initials. That's strange. I mean, that would be a That's twisting. Right. That's right. Would you like that, Jimmy? I do. Yeah. I heard uh, T, the resident, <laughs> didn't at all care for the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't like the uh, girls uh, playing around with him? Apparently not. Oh, that's terrible. It really is. Seems like, uh, I don't want to you know, let, let his, his name out or anything. He can't, it's confidential. Privacy, yeah. But they did talk T, to the him. resident. Yeah. Yeah. And he didn't like the uh, being touched by uh, girls. I didn't they would touch me inappropriately. <laughs> oh, see the I resident. I was trying to take a snooze, and Brianna would flick the head of my penis. <laughs> she, but to Brianna's very attractive. Yes, she is. And I would try to smile sexually at her, and she would flick the head of my penis. And say, what are you looking at, Ted? <laughs> uh -oh. oh, your name tea? just got out. <laughs> 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 Sometimes I would make it in my diapers just to get the gals to come around. You'd sit in your stinky shit while, until the girls made the rounds. I'd press the call button with my legs up in the air and then try to <laughs> wink at her while she wiped my bottom. <laughs> oh, someone made Brianna a gift. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hey, what, got, what do you got? I heard MySpace uh, profile. What? Yeah. Every... Oof, pop that up there. Wow. Wait. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Wait. Said... Holy shit. <laughs> wow. Dude, just stop it. How? How did she get so deranged? How did she get caught? What are her hobbies? Probably, probably like hiking yeah. and twisting cocks into <laughs> shoelaces. Shit. What little fucking cock tease? Oh, that little bitch. She needs to be fucking dick smacked.
She's a little cheerleader, too? Of course, right? Yeah, say. One of those, all her friends. yeah, one of those gross cheerleading things. Well, no, they, they, they look... I don't know what it is. Right. There's think always that's... one of the big ones in there for the bottom of the pyramid. I think that's the... What's that dumb thing they a throw? drill squad? Or they the throw up in the air when, in the parade. They're baton, they the pep it. squad Ooh. girls. Yeah, yeah. Anything but a real cheerleader. Exactly. She was probably too much of a fucking yeah. nut yeah. to be a cheerleader. <laughs> yep. Spitting in old people's mouths, jerking them off. Every time they try to do the pyramid, she's probably trying to stick her fingers in another oh, girl's pussy. Some girl's ass. <laughs> Funny like, girls that are down on their knees. <laughs> when they fling them off the top and catch them, she's fucking there with thumbs up. Look, you got the look to be a cheerleader, but, you know, we can't have you fucking oh. poking everyone in the shitter as we're trying to <laughs> build, a, build the pyramid. Stinky fingers. <laughs> hey, what's her fingers in my mouth, Gregory? I didn't care for that at all. T, the resident oh. is back. I didn't us. like it. In your mouth? Yes. I just wanted some jello, and she put her fingers in my mouth, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Do you want to know a little bit about uh, Brianna? Okie dokie. Well, sure. She's a junior at ALHS. She loves to dance. She Aww. doesn't know what she would do without dance. She loves hanging out with her friends, rollerblading, walking and shopping. She doesn't hate too many things. She's up for almost anything. Mm. She does love doing random things and, and being goofy. Yeah, it's being goofy. <laughs> and she never has to really uh she never has to be really serious unless she has to be. Well, what does she consider <laughs> has to be? Right. If you're in an old folks home, put poking him in the shitter. I think that with his mouth open and it needs some spitting. I'm serious. <laughs> she says, I think that uh that's about it. I'm pretty open to doing anything as long as it's having fun. <laughs> hey, that that describes it to a T. Hey, Jerking well, off well. old men and uh, st uh, sticking your finger in the uh, old people's shitters and poking their tits, spitting in their mouths, mm -hmm. jerking them off. That's fun. Uh, good old-fashioned fun. That's a good story. Yeah, especially because they were hot. All right. Her MySpace page is still up, huh? For now. People don't realize that. How do they get that, to her MySpace? Because people are yelling on this. Uh, you know what it is? It is myspace.com slash poke in the shitter. Yeah, it's old, <laughs> old pink sock. <laughs> to <It's> gray a... <laughs> sock. <laughs> gray <laughs> pink stocking. It falls out like a fucking dinosaur tail. <laughs> you finger the old guy's ass, you pull it out. All of a sudden, he's a T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like one of those. It's, fucking... a pink, it's a pink sock with those suspenders on it. <laughs> His asshole fucking uncoils like a slinky that won't come back up. It falls downstairs and then stays there. What a... Boo. Oh. <laughs> What are those fucking clams with the big brown things? Oh, the gooey, gooey, gooey ducks. Like gooey ducks. They, have, yeah. they have gooey duck asshole. <laughs> gooey duck. <laughs> anyway, our MySpace is myspace.com slash buck, B U C K underscore zero eight. Buck underscore zero eight. All right. So let's see how long that goes on for. Buck eight. Fuck it. Wow. I don't think she's trying to do some of her name there, right? Bucket. Bucket. Buck eight. Fuck it. I don't know. Bucket list. It's no blessing, but uh, no. I think she's trying for something there. Yeah. I love wow. this. Right, that's a hell of a story. That's and, great. And Fontaine reminds us that uh, we used to do teen, hot teen news. We should have. Oh, we, yeah. should have oh. we should officially bring back hot teen news. Hot teen mm. news. Hot teen news on the Opie and Anthony show. Mm. All right. Well, <laughs> so uh, I took four flights over the uh, the vacation we all had. Four. Yeah, I couldn't get a I couldn't get a, a nonstop. And, Take any uh, of them uh, little guys? No, uh, no little guys. And I just hate flying. And then now there's a story that comes out today, and I'm not sure if this should if this would help me or horrify me more even, even uh, horrify me even more. I guess I will say it's I I don't know what story you're talking about, but it's probably something to do with a near miss or some some mishap on a nope. plane. No, uh, no near miss. The guessing. economy being so crappy that maintenance is down. Dude, that's exactly what I was thinking yeah. about when I was flying. I'm like, all right, we're not stupid. The economy's falling apart, and we're all kind of like trying to cut corners in our spending and what, what not. Yes. And we know what the company's doing here. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, look, if the radio world blows because of the economy and they're getting rid of everybody, you got to think the airline industry is like, ah, do we really need all these mechanics? Do we really need... One mechanic for the whole off for right. all the airline. That's he just goes around to the airports and fixes whatever's broken. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, wow, they probably can't afford their people just like radio can't oh. afford their people. So what the hell... Are they not checking on the plane before this, you know, takes off? Yeah. That was my fear this time. Absolutely. Uh, 
Whew. But this story, uh, well, well, tell me what you think. You want to guess? It's not a near miss. Uh, let, let, and you went with the economy. That's that's a very good guess. Mechanics. Um, I, 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 other than that, I don't know. Dude, and the other thing I forgot to tell you, I, I had a four-hour layover in Miami, and we're sitting on the plane for uh, easily 45 minutes. Plane ready to go. And then the stewardess or the flight attendant or whatever the hell they like to be called these days, they get on the, the PA and go, oh, we're just waiting for the pilots. <laughs> and I'm sitting there on the plane going, they haven't even, they're, they're not even in the cockpit checking all their instruments yet? From the bar. Because doesn't that make you feel feel good when you walk on the plane and there they are in the cockpit? Even if they're not doing anything, they're like, okay. Check. Check. They're sitting there getting prepared for your, you know, four-hour flight. Yeah. Oh, we're just waiting for the pilots. And, and uh, you know, I'm lucky enough to be in first class, so I hear the pilot come on and go, sorry, we're late, but uh, we had to wait for our takeout bags. They were eating in between flights, and, and yeah. you would think the waitress would, like, you know, take care of the pilots so they could get on their plane early and check the instruments. It's like, uh, probably like me this morning, jumping into the car, starting it, throwing it in reverse, and just going. Yeah. Because, like, ah, I'm late. Right. Yeah, they didn't brush their teeth. They're all just... <laughs> just run, run to your car. Pilot bag, all filthy. <laughs> so, yeah, so they got their takeout bag, and they go into the cockpit, and ten minutes later, we're, we're backing up. They're I'm like... rolling. Oh, this is going to make for a pleasant flight. Like, what kind of systems check could they have done? Yeah. Whatever. I like to know they're sitting there when I get on the plane. I don't like to be on the plane first. And a good pilot does a walk around yes. of his aircraft. Checks out, looks with the flashlight, looks in the engines. Oh, yeah. For whatever it's worth on yeah, planes sure. that size, they're supposed to walk around, yeah, check sure all the little pit tubes, make sure they're not clogged, yeah. make sure all the safety uh, devices are, are pulled off of certain things. And uh, I guess they didn't do that because no. they were a little hungry. <laughs> and I like to see the young bucks because the guy that walked on this plane, I'm like, ah, he could easily have a heart attack in the air. That's my do other you thing. you want to see the young bucks or you want to see the experienced, like, no, these, fighter pilots? This guy walked on and he had a red face and it wasn't because he was in the sun too long. Oh, really? And I'm like, One great. Those blood pressure. This red. guy's got a nice blood pressure rolling. <laughs> Well, that's a little creepy. I, yeah, exactly. You want to see the the, the young, the, like, the early 30s. That's about the age. Uh, not too young. I not see too a old. a seasoned guy, probably in his f late 40s, early 50s, yep. has fighter experience, yeah. been shot at. Hell no. Like, I like a pilot that's landed his plane with half a wing. Well, I understand <laughs> all that, but these guys look like they could have a heart attack at any moment. I don't want them flying the damn plane. Well, the older guys look at the commercial piloting. It's like, ah, this is just this is just pussy nonsense. It's yeah, just yeah. so easy. It's so old hat when you're not being shot. Like Those are the guys yeah. you want who have combat experience. Yeah. Like, I've done this run while being shot at and uh, zigzagging through flak. Yeah, this yeah. Is having to drop bombs. This is nothing. <laughs> Bunch of you retards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's the story. I don't know if this uh, makes me feel good or or uh, whatever, but here it is. From the runway to the sky, this flight is like most Cut. others. Flying the pattern is a breeze, the landing smooth. The only thing that's different, the pilot in command of this air coupe is a... Is a what? Is a what? I'm going to just is randomly, what? off the top of my head... Is a what? I'm just going to say double amputee. <laughs> Homosexual? <laughs> is a breeze, the landing, smooth. The only thing that's different, the pilot in command of this air coop is a 25-year-old woman without arms. Hey, look! Amazing! I got it! Dude, stop Did cheating. somebody tell you? No, of I... Of course it is. Someone no, told no one, him. No one told me. One of his uh, pal talk friends. No, and you... How about you play along a little bit? It wasn't. I just saw this story on the news uh, last <laughs> night. So, uh, until I heard the propeller, oh. yeah. and this woman has... Because I was horrified at the thought of it, too. Yeah. So, like, does what that... What the hell? So, is flying... My question is, is flying that safe where now they're like, yeah, you, of course you could fly. Anyone can fly this. Do it with your or feet. Or should I be horrified? Like, if there's a problem, what, you're going to take the, 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 the wheel with your tongue or whatever the hell it is. The, 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 what is it? The stick. The, the stick. stick. The yoke, I the believe yoke? they call sure. it. The yoke. How is a she double flying? double amputee is flying a plane. A How does she do it? Well, we'll find out, I guess. I bet she can't do three push-ups, though. <laughs> Fix her rotten wagon. <laughs> this air coupe is a 25-year-old woman without arms. 
A lot of people maybe have doubted me or don't believe that a girl without arms can, or a woman without arms could do much. Yeah, sorry we doubt you, but you, yeah. you have no arms. You're over our heads. Right. My problem is that she's oh. the woman pilot. I don't care about the arms. <laughs> <laughs> the gender that bars me. Look at her. The, the, maybe we could put this up on owendayradio.com, but uh, no, she no arms. Good. My favorite part of this uh, this screenshot is uh, it has her name, and you know how sometimes they'll have a title under your name? Yeah. You know, like uh, yeah, Anthony Kumi, a radio host. This It just says Jessica Cox, and then under it, has no arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, good thing it's not a... Uh, oh, her, oh, her, her, name, her name could have been Jessica Arms. <laughs> 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 Lonely girl. Nice. But she can. Jessica Cox, a certified pilot, does it all and alone, even her pre-flight inspection. It's full. She checks the oil with a screwdriver, her foot and head. Yeah. And fills out her own logbook. Okay. All right, she was Why? using a screwdriver with her toe. Look at this. Heart she, she's using a screwdriver with her toes, and, and she's writing in her logbook with oh, her toes. No one wants to read it. <laughs> nasty foot stuff. <laughs> F, man. It just oh. smells. Oh, a smelly logbook. <laughs> yeah. That logbook stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to jump roping. What are you doing? How could she jump rope? She yeah, she, had no, a hard no, time doing that. No, she, <laughs> she's the jumper. She doesn't have to do the, the twirly uh, thing. Uh, okay, <laughs> there is the second... Really, the only tricky part. Yeah, this was my first challenge in flight training was how to buckle the seatbelt. So oh, I figured out, well, you don't always have to buckle the seatbelt after you sit down. Oh, so she buckles it first and then slides into the seatbelt. Yeah. She's flying a plane, for God's <laughs> sake. She's insane. She could be over your head as we speak. Yeah. Does she have a co-pilot, though? Or Hell she no. Goes, she she did alone. it all by herself, Jimmy. Wow. She goes alone up in that plane. And I guess steers with her foot and works the throttle with her foot. But then, how do you do other things if you need to? If you need to uh, make a maneuver while you have to maybe operate the radio, how are you doing that? She does it with her toes. You need a third appendage, though. What if you, you have to use work... her toes? She could use her toes. What if you have to work the yoke and the throttle at the same time you have to radio something? She uses her toes, uses like her you toes. would use your hands. Well, she yeah, must have you would... something with her knee or something. And then, what about the rudder? You work the rudder with your feet. You have to work the rudder pedal with your feet. So then how does she work that? I don't know. Here's the second half of the story. Maybe it's her plane has Born that. with a congenital birth defect, she's accepted who she is. For 11 years, she used prosthetic arms, then decided she didn't need them. What and three years ago, a pilot with Wright Flight, an aviation company, offered her the chance to fly. Well, when she came in here, we knew she would she'd be able to do it just because of the drive that she has. Absolutely. Yeah, Parrish, you know, he has this undying faith in me. She's already logged close to 100 hours in the sky. When you're behind the yoke and, and you're soloing the airplane for the first time and you look over and you don't see your instructor there and you're forced to accept that you're flying the airplane, you realize Jesus. at that moment that you literally have your life in your own hands, or in huh. my case, in my own feet. Oh, oh, oh. We got it. Yeah. Life's in my own feet. Yeah, yeah, we got it. A foot joke. Old aircraft she's flying there. Oh, my God. And, and uh, no, it's great because we're watching the video of this. No one was brave enough to go up in the plane with her. All no. the shots are of the plane way up in the sky. Hey, you solo. <laughs> right. Usually the reporter would go, oh, what the hell, I'll go up uh, with you. Mind if I mount a camera in the uh, uh, cockpit with <laughs> right. you? Um, yeah, no, it'll just be on the whole time. Don't pay any attention to it. I don't want to distract you. <laughs> she was steering it with her feet. Because you think that everything is hooked up differently, but she was actually using the same steering wheel yeah. as, as a, another pilot would use. It's not specially yeah. built. Let's say hi to Jesse in Jersey. Jesse. By the way, they called hey, her a red morning, baron, boys. but for different reasons. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Jesse. Oh, <laughs> Jesse. Hey, uh, oh, congratulations. I just wanted to give uh, you and your wife my blessings, but I also wanted to know... Uh, when this chick's, like, checking the air pressure on the tire, what, does she bang her head on it like a woodpecker <laughs> pecking into a tree to see if it's inflated? Yeah, she can't, uh, <laughs> I like that can't risk hurting her foot by <laughs> kicking the tires. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so that, that creeps me out. But she looks like she could, uh, she does a pretty good job. Her legs really bend uh, in a strange yeah. way. She could really bend that knee all the way back. Well, she's never... Could, she's got to be able to, I guess, take care of uh, the dirty business after she goes. She doesn't know any better. She hasn't had arms her whole life. But how does she do that? It looks like she can... Just the way she's steering that plane, 
she can bend that knee back really far. Look at that ridiculous picture. <laughs> Never take a picture like that if you have no arms. It's almost like a glamour shot. It's um, it's it's one of those uh, old school photo backgrounds. Yeah. She's wearing a smart business woman's jacket, and her hair is done impeccably. She's smiling, has her um, librarian type glasses on. She's pretty. Nice tan. Good teeth. She's pretty and no arms. <laughs> <laughs> it's just and the freakiest looking picture. And she's blessed with big boobs, so it looks like she's just hugging herself uh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. How much do you love yourself? Stop hugging yourself. <laughs> she looks like the front of the ship. Yeah, <laughs> right. An old Viking ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! You know, don't are, you think they'll ever figure out the fake arm thing in our lifetime? They got the fake. Uh, they got the fake leg thing down. Oh, the old spatula foot. Where they got the little springy things that they run on. They. I mean, when you see these guys walking with the fake legs, it's amazing. Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't even legs. tell. You know. Yeah, they got those. Uh, the spatula feet of fake legs for the runners. All that stuff. And they stuff. got these prosthetic feet that like look like real legs and stuff like that. And um, it is weird when you see them with those titanium pole legs. Like, say that someone lost their uh, legs at the knees, and then they got these titanium poles that are really thin, like broom handle thin, and they go down to these little spatula feet, and they wear regular pants, but when the wind blows, it's like, and the cuff of the pants wrap around that little pole, and you go like, whoa, that looks freaky. <laughs> like Lieutenant Dan legs. Yes, Lieutenant yeah. Dan legs. But they, uh, they got that figured legs. out. The, the arms, though. Well, the arm. Yeah. <clears throat> the dumb hook, and they can't figure it out. You're doing a lot with your arms. They're starting to, right? They're starting. Yeah, like, yeah. These Desert Storm, a lot, or the Iraq guy, I hope so. guys coming back now. They're starting to use like thought. Is starting to move. Yeah, they're the tying fingers. it into the. Uh, they're tying electrodes into the actual nerves that moved your hands in the first place. So you're able to actually move your hand by thinking of moving your hand, and it's becoming more natural. I hope. And they don't look as ghoulish as they used to. They're yeah. kind of getting better. It's weird. It's a, a fine line, I guess, between um, uh, being aesthetically nice and function right. functional. Uh, but yeah, they're kind of getting there. We've yeah. come a long way since Roy Munson. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Roy Munson. For all the Kingpin fans out there. Beep, wop, boop. I uh, am a robot arm. Some people become famous for things they've done. One young bride-to-be is becoming famous for what she hasn't done. She's never kissed her fiancé, or any boyfriend for that matter. Mm. King Cloud's Alyssa Hahn has a story that's new at 10. So, but you did have a good day at work? Mm -hmm. In a day and age when abstinence till marriage seems more the exception than the rule, 21-year-old Rachel Welch decided to take it one step further and not kiss anyone till she married. She made the decision when she was 14. That'll keep me out of trouble, and I just wanted that to be a special gift for the man I was to be married to. Welch and her fiancé, Todd Ritter, met through their church youth group. Ritter has kissed other girls in the past, but he found Rachel's approach refreshing. Finally found someone who, <clears throat> who really respected herself, and so that made me respect her even more. What do you what do you think of that one, Francine? She's, she's not even kissing. She's lying. You think she's lying? Why? She probably sucked cock instead. How do you not kiss guys? Are you no. serious? She doesn't mm. kiss Here, nothing until she gets I, married. One of my friends told me that, uh, like in countries where there's like boarding school and stuff, because he went to boarding school mm. and you uh, did he. Yeah, yeah, he did. No, but in countries where you you like say, well, you know, if you if your husband knows you're not a virgin, he's not going to marry you. He said they just do it in the butt instead. Sure. So, I think it's just natural to just want to do it. So how do you not want to kiss at least? Yeah, she's got some kind of issue, right, Francine? Yeah. She's fucked up. Is Either that or she's really ugly and nobody wanted to kiss her anyway. She wouldn't want to. She didn't kiss them, but they would rub clear stuff on her lips at the end of the night. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you. Let's say hi. We got more of the pants. Matt in Philly. Matt. Hey, guys. Hey. Uh, I just pulled this up online. It looks like in European women's sizing, 42 uh, is equal to a U.S. size 12 in women's clothing. So this could very well be a size 42 Europeans women's oh, pants. Steve wearing. would never be a 12 in women's no clothing. No way. He'd be, come on, size 14. Yeah. Wait, how big is a 12, though? 12's up there, no? Look at fucking uh, Frederica Bimmel. 14. And, oh, the other one, actually, uh, was right, a size right. 14. 14. The, the, yeah. 
All right. Uh, I thought Matt, politicians. Matt, I thought you were onto something. All right. Oh, so did I. I don't know women. Thanks for nothing. Matt just laying in front of the door. No, I like uh, that. Matt's trying for us. <laughs> Thanks, Francine. That's pretty good. It always bombs. Yeah. So, uh, Francine, she doesn't kiss guys. She's lying. She's got a. Uh, is she? Is this a fiance? They are getting married. Mm-hmm. I want to see a picture of her. What I do don't th- believe it. What do you think they do? Besides, uh, they're, they're not kissing. So, what do you think they do to show affection there, Francine? That's really nuts. Like, when I was, like, 12, I used to think about boys. So how is she 21 and hasn't kissed anybody? And there yeah, she is. prude. She's all right. She's a lying cunt. Who did she? <laughs> <laughs> so many guys probably tried to bang her. Are you serious? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. If she said she was a virgin, I'd believe it. But not that she hasn't kissed anybody. <laughs> no way. A lying cunt. All right, let's see what she does for affection. Rachel credits her parents, particularly her mother, for her resolve and self-respect. I made her know that. I said, you're a prize. The couple admits it isn't easy. They find other ways to express their affection. We we rub noses and we, um, we give hugs. If I'm over here and everyone's in bed, I go home. You know, just because we don't want to put ourselves in a place where we know we might stumble. But you can bet on their uh, wedding day this July they'll be added anticipation and anxiety when their pastor says you may now kiss the bride. A lot of my guy friends think that, you know, oh, that's, what if she's a terrible kisser? Or, she you will know, what be. If, what if there's just no sparks? It won't be. And, uh, which are things I'm not, I'm not worried about. It and I know because be. I love him that it doesn't matter if it's a really good kiss. We have our whole life to... To work on it. Oh, oh stop God. it. This is the biggest Are mistake you, you can make. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to kiss. It's going to suck. They're going to fuck. It's going to suck. And then she's going to be all frustrated. He's going to be frustrated. They're going to fuck other people. And this marriage is doomed. Francine, that's a comment. I yeah. think she was sexually abused by somebody in her family. How could you not want to have sex? Oh, well, or kiss Paul. people. Holla! <laughs> her uncle probably did her. She's a good girl. No, she's not. We're, we're missing another she's angle She's a weirdo. No, we're missing another weird. angle. Joe she's in, a fucking queer. Joe in Nebraska. She's weird. Joe in Nebraska has another angle. Joe! Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Joe. Hey, you know what it is? If, if anybody's ever seen that Richard Queer movie back in the early 90s, you don't kiss a fucking whore. She probably does everything. Yeah. Butt kiss, and, oh, and, yeah, and yeah. no one asked her about the other. Stuff. Well, I don't mind having a big <laughs> one in my <laughs> ass. <laughs> yeah. Take a shot in the jaw from the cock. <laughs> she won't take the fucking tongue or the fucking lips. What do you do for affection? I'll lay him on the bathroom floor and shit in his mouth. <laughs> right. That's why I don't kiss him. <laughs> she probably oh, gets fisted. He's, he's on my ass. Yeah. Hey, oh, I like your I like your thought there, Joe. Impossible. Have a good one. Punch it out, Joe in Nebraska. <laughs> I think I've taken think- in the ass and yeah. I've fucked silly. I've had yeah. gang bangs and <laughs> right. everything, but I don't kiss. Right. I'm the cracker with circle jerks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they need to run an STD test on her. That's the only way I'd believe it. Why? What if she doesn't have an STD? She might. She have. has to have. There's no way. You're so petrified of STDs. Yes, I am. What do you have? I don't have any. Yeah. What have you gotten in the past what that you got? Like? I got gonorrhea once. <laughs> <laughs> sure. right. No, wait, no, it was uh, chlamydia. I'm sorry. All right. It was curable, so I'm all good. Who gave you chlamydia? It was my boyfriend. The boyfriend with the girlfriend? No, that was another boyfriend. Oh, and how did he get it? Probably from another girlfriend. Well, I would assume from some other girl. But... Yeah. And uh, did he know he had it when he fucked you? Uh, I don't think so. And how did you know you had it? Um, well, it was unfortunate. My mom found out I was having sex with him, and she took me to get tested. And it turned out I had the big chlamydia. But they gave me some penicillin, and yeah. it was all good. So it went away? You didn't have any signs, though? No, it, nothing happened. Huh. It's a great thing to have, because you can get rid of it. It also, it's also can be a silent. Uh, yes. Chlamydia it, can be silent. It can make women sterile, too, if you, you have it untreated long enough. I don't know if I want kids, enough. so I don't care. Well, apparently, from your other story, you don't want kids. <laughs> Do you, maybe now? Um, By the time I have kids, you know, I'll probably be able to make something and leave it in a jar somewhere, and it'll grow. <laughs> Oh my God. Like one of those potato plants with the toothpicks in it? Like the in Matrix. The They'll just grow in a bubble somewhere. Oh, okay. And then, and then I'll go to the hospital and pick it up, and I'll never even have to do anything. I won't carry it. I won't get stretch marks. Nothing. Yeah. It'll, it'll be great. You don't want to, uh, any of that shit. No, I don't. 
Yeah. Oh, all right. Chlamydia. So that's what uh, we found out. Unbelievable. She had chlamydia. And it didn't hurt. At one point. <laughs> and it didn't hurt. Well, that's good. Yeah. Very happy. But that's the only thing I've ever gotten. I've been clean ever since. Inspirational words. <laughs> From Francine. I had chlamydia, but it didn't hurt. The words, Francine story. Not one Words bit. to live by. That's right. If you're going to get something, get chlamydia. It's, uh, so, that's about, their slogan, I think. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go for Chlamydia, it does a body good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> How about a cold before chlamydia? If you get, uh, have to get something. Uh, what do you mean? You said if you have to get something, chlamydia. I would say if, I, if you have to get something, a cold. Well, I was too young. I didn't really know a lot about diseases and stuff. Was, How old were you? I was 14 when I got chlamydia. Jeez. 14? Yep. When was it your was, first uh, It was time my you... first boyfriend. He gave it to me. How old oh, was he? nice. Yeah. Was he a white guy or a black guy? He was a black guy, and he was 19. Yeah? And then would you swear off black guys? I've dated some black guys, too, you know. I've yeah. done both. More white than black? No, I've done more black guys than white guys. Really? Yeah. Because when when last I asked you this many years ago, you had said you'd done more white guys. So have you had more black guys recently? I guess so. Yeah? Because you're down in D.C., right? Yeah, there's a lot of black guys there. Yeah, yeah. Do you shave, Francine? Yes, I do. How totally? much? Not enough, but I do shave. Not enough? Want to show uh, what, do no, you mean not a, what do you mean not enough? You leave some? I should shave more often. Oh, oh more often. sometimes I get a little lazy. Do you shave it all off when you do shave? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then you let it grow in, and, and a little stubble here and there, and then I cut it off again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Francine. Me too. Uh, can you I intern again? It. Um, sure. So you had you had sex with this guy at fourteen. When did you start? Fourteen? Thirteen? Fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. Boy, and you get chlamydia right off the fucking bat. But it wasn't AIDS or anything, you know, like or herpes. <laughs> Jesus, but it's, it's the still first something. sexual experience you have, and it, you get chlamydia. <coughs> that's fucked up. That's all right. I just think well, that's it. You consider yourself a winner. I got over it. We got a guy in the line that thinks he had sex with you. He probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of sex until I was like, uh, probably about eighteen. Yeah. I fucked a lot of people. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Good girl. <laughs> like how many would you say? Um. I think by the time I was 25, probably like 65 guys. <laughs> 65? <laughs> I stopped counting. <laughs> I love her. You never, you never told us this. You always kept it like kind of innocent yeah, with us. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know. It's not like... I, nobody really knows who I am anyway. No I fucked a lot of, of motherfuckers. I don't care. Condoms work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made sure they work on Oh, yeah. After chlamydia, I had to be careful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because my mom was like, you could have gotten AIDS. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I only got chlamydia. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, 65 guys. <laughs> no, that was my 22, actually. So, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I slowed down though, around 19. Yeah, you slowed down to so what? So it's probably like three six. a day? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta piss, I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, get that whore off your lap. No, no, I want to. I want to. have to tinkle badly. Yeah. Can we uh, say hi to Bobby in Jersey? Bobby? Yeah, let's see if Bobby's one of the guys that fucked uh, Francine. Great hi. boy. Hey, Bobby. Would you like to play Did I Fuck Francine? <laughs> I'll take dirty cooch for 100, Alex. <laughs> Bobby from Jersey, uh, why do you think you might have fucked Francine now? I mean, considering half of New York already has, um, I'll jump on that boat. That's half you of Maryland. Me, Francine? Francine, you remember me? We went down in the Bowery? Uh, I guess. Bobby? Well, I'm surprised if you don't, you filthy cum dumpster. Frunkus! <laughs> Right. Apparently, he was lying. Oh, really? Well, well maybe. I don't, I don't think I've ever done a Bobby. I've done a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. A lot of Tyrones? <laughs> no, not really. Just regular a names. Few. Kevin's. Names, Charlemagne's. Names. Charlemagne. <laughs> I don't do the exotic ones from the projects. Amphernees? Any Amphernees? No, Amphernees. <laughs> Amphernee. <laughs> they all had regular names. Yeah? Yeah. Like Bob. Not Bob. Well, you said no. I don't remember. They're Steve. All, it, the relationships are so Steve? short. Yeah, I a think Frank. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, with a Frank. Yeah, maybe. Hold on, we got another guy that fucked Frank. Ted. 
I fucked Ramstein once. <laughs> we got another guy that might have fucked her. John? Hey, what's going on, boys? Hey. Hey, uh, I fucked a melodic girl uh, I met at the Crow's Nest in uh, New Jersey. Did Francine ever hang out there? I am not a mulatto. I'm a oh, regular she, black person. She's a tutu. Okay, well, you look light-skinned, but uh, did you ever hang out a at the tootsie. Crow's Nest? <laughs> or a uh, tutu. I don't <laughs> think so. Tootsie. I never went to New Jersey. Yeah, what are you... Uh, oh, okay. Well, then I might not have. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the call. All right. What okay. tribe are you from she's there, She's tootsie. I am half Caribbean and half tootsie from Rwanda. Tootsie. See... The Hutu are the ones that you mm-hmm. know you try to hack apart those. Yeah, because they're so like cute. You're you you were too superior, I guess. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you're Red hysterical, Red man. <laughs> so you real? So what happened? Like you started fucking, and you were just like, "I love this fucking." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was good. So where did you go to get guys? Um, I like had school at friends we'd meet at the parks but if you were like at school and you're fucking a lot of guys you did you get the label of being like the school whore actually wait a second i don't know where i met most of these guys come to think about it <laughs> oh my god I, it's too long ago were like, they I, older what was the oldest what was the biggest age difference between you and a guy you were fucking uh i don't know i'm I think uh, one time I had sex with this crack dealer, and <laughs> uh, of course you did. He had money. Uh, and he's a crack dealer. And he used to take us out to eat. He used to take me and my best friend out to eat. That isn't all that special. Yeah, how old? How old were you? Um, I was fourteen still. You were fourteen, and the crack dealer takes you out. And I think he was about 30 or something. 30. He lied. He said he was 18, and I thought he was, but yeah. I don't think so now. And then right when he came, he went, oh, I'm in my 30s. <laughs> no, actually, I saw him when he was strung out on crack, so I guess he started taking it. That was like maybe a year later. Oh. And uh, he didn't look 18 anymore. <laughs> no, all of a sudden that aged the shit out of him, huh? Yeah, cracked at him bad. Yeah, unfortunately, it does that to some people. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> Other people, I guess, yeah, it works wonders. <laughs> I, so I just came back. Was a guy, did he bang or no? Uh, a, yeah, a crack, a crack dealer when she was 14. He was in <laughs> and his And you're worried 30s. about uh, who Jimmy was with in the past. Yeah. I, but, well, but you had sex with a crack we, dealer. We used condoms, so, so it's okay. So we could okay. use condoms? Yeah, Jimmy could get a condom. What the fuck? Yeah, I'll try it. He's been with trannies. Oh, don't believe first. everything I say on the air. It's a pack of condoms lies. are for faggots. Huh? They're the same thing. No, They're like condoms. Guys. No, it's not. Condoms suck. No, condoms work. Yeah, I guess so. I don't so. care if they I'm work. I'm living proof. I could be dead right now. Probably. Yeah, but condoms just don't feel good on a dick. They don't feel good. I've had sex with and without condoms. If I'm not talking same. about you. I'm so talking you. about me. If you slide in without a condom, oh, it's the best. All you're doing when you're fucking with a condom is going, I wish I had this fucking thing off. And then trying to get it off without her noticing so you can just <laughs> shove it back in. Thank God it feels the same to you girls because then you don't know when I fucking slip my thumb underneath the fucking rim and as I pumped back, snap that fucker right off. Oh, and then boy. drove it back in in one steady fucking pounding. <laughs> I never miss a beat. That condom goes flying like a rubber band. <laughs> That's right. And then I go, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. What happened to the condom? Must have came off. Oh, well, too late. Welcome to the wonderful world of AIDS. That's right. And then while I'm coming, no. I yell, here goes the next 18 years. Blork. <laughs> blorka, 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 blorka. Now, then I'll realize, like, right when I'm ready to come that I don't have a condom on and go, oh, that's why I had to shoot all over your ass. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, you know. I like it, too. I think it's it's like if 100% is really good, it's probably like 99.2% good with a condom. And that's pretty good. That's how it feels the same. You did no. the math, huh? As I'm far as feeling very good, good at math, it's 0% with a condom. I excelled in math. 100% with that one. Yeah? yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did you fuck your teacher? <laughs> Not that one. But how, how many teachers did you fuck? No, I only slept with one professor. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Seven times nine. I don't... Uh, out of 49... You said you, you didn't. Not only did you not math. excel in math. No, no, I excelled in math when I was in school. I <laughs> excel in math when I was in school. When I was in school. But that's oh, basic that's great. multiplication. Seventy-two. 
No, it's not seven. Nine times seven? <laughs> How do you not know that? Fifty-one. Thirty-six. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, Who cares? Out. Nobody's ever going to ask exactly. you out of their job and You know what? She Who makes cares? The, she makes the, the best points. thing. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. God, we had such a busy show Friday. This story is kind of getting old, so let's get it out there. An amazing thing happened in New York City uh, Thursday or Friday of last week. Oh, I and, can think of 20 things that this could be. And, you know, we talk about uh, how they love to give tickets in this fine city of ours. Yes. Listen to this story if you haven't heard it yet. Jennifer Morales, who doesn't want her face shown, wonders how her father's body could go unnoticed for so long. I'm shocked. I'm surprised. This is how the daughter wants to remember her handyman father, 58-year-old George Morales. Not as a decomposed body oh. found in a van under the BQE on Wednesday. By He'd been river. dead a month in a van with four parking tickets. So they, <laughs> they just kept putting parking tickets on a car or a van. That had a dead body in it. Could you see the dead body though? As a decomposing guy. Now, if the Probably not. if the guy was in the back, trying to get some shit. Well, they're making it sound like the guy was still at the wheel before he dropped dead. And they're assuming that he was just, you know, snoozing. Yeah. So if he's in the back, but yeah, but it's under the BQE. That that whole area is a dump. Yeah. I know. How would you know if uh, you're smelling a dead body? That's true. Morales' daughter says her father left their apartment here in Washington Heights on May 5th in a van owned by a friend. Morales was headed for Long Island and just vanished. His daughter suspects Morales, who suffered from diabetes and heart problems, may have felt ill and pulled off the road for a nap. A window was cracked. The odor became overpowering. After the car was ticketed each Monday for a month, a marshal about to tow the van noticed a body in the back seat. If you see that a car car has already three or four tickets and you're just slabbing more you know at least call 911 when he was found his I'm daughter not, says he was not covered with a blanket or coat but in plain view of anyone who looked inside she wonders what if there were a person inside a car who was ill and needed help uh, yeah, yeah all right you know it's well, you could wonder dead, all you like but nobody noticed she's trying to make yeah. a big like uh, you know yeah i need a walk we need to all walk on a Saturday with ribbons to make sure this doesn't happen again. Yeah, they probably yeah. fucking thought he was asleep, and the t ticket people probably didn't notice. I'm yeah. not a fan of the parking uh, ticket like anybody. No. But, geez, what the fuck? Yes. No one's fault he was rotting with him and his fucking rotten <laughs> blood sugar issues. Don't blame anybody for that. You want to prevent that from happening? Tell Pop to get a motel room and sleep. Not fucking do it under the BQE. <laughs> yeah, I guess there was, yeah, back seat in there. I was thinking like a work van, but... He was probably in the one of the back seats, just kind of curled up. No one yeah, looks I guess in so. there. Those fucking people come by, they look at the Reggie, and they fucking write the ticket or print it out or whatever. Scan your registration now. That pisses it me off. It spits the ticket out. So now they're barely at your car. Yeah, that's it. Because I, I like Two I like seconds. seeing the I like seeing the nervous guys. Yeah, where they're writing the ticket, just hoping that the person isn't going to be coming out of a don't show up a nearby store. Oh, they give them problems anyway. Fuckers. Fickers. You want a weirdo story? We got a weirdo. Weirdo. We have two of these, actually. We have a young one and an old one. Young weirdo, old weirdo. Well, uh... Oh, young weirdo, I think you know which one. Is this like the horrific story? Which one? 17 years old? Is that the one you mean it? Yeah. What? Well, there was a whole yeah. thing that happened. Oh, oh, Uncle Paul. That fucking asshole. Yeah. What They're only charging animal. him with rape, probably, because... I, rape, I, rape and murdered an 18-month-old? Uh, an 8-month-old. 8-month-old. I'm guessing like it that. wasn't a sexual rape. It was probably something... The kid... It was a horrible story. No, it was sexual rape. I don't think that he... I wonder if he fucked the kid or if he just put something he up did. his ass. You think so? Oh, oh, put something... Hmm. Like, I think what happened was it was, a, it was this 17-year-old this, this boyfriend of the kid's mother. The, uh, the kid was crying. The guy was just beating this kid. And, uh... He said that the kid, they found bruises in the kid's rectum or tears. So that he said, oh, he shit, and I was trying to wipe him, and I hurt him. But we all well, that's a lie. Uh, he probably... Wipe him with a lump hammer? Well, yeah, or, or a stick. stick. But he yeah. probably inserted something angrily to hurt the kid as opposed to... Oh, what a, but that's a rape with an object. Oh, sure. What's wrong with people? And he has a record, this guy. They should, again, a guy like that, they should just lay him down and just put a, put a bullet in his head. Yeah, there is no reason that this guy should even be part of society anymore. He has nothing to offer. Nothing. The people against the death penalty, they come out when stories like this happen? Oh, always. Well, that just, Every life is shut That shutted. just amazes me. I, uh. We are not the executioners. God will... 
Shut it. We haven't kill killed them. somebody in this country in a long time. We might kill that, no. that dude in California. Texas, fire dude? Texas still kills people. What, what's the fire dude story? Uh, I don't know. Oh, they might get. They gave him the death penalty, I believe. Don't they? California. What the hell was the story? I didn't think we were going down this road. Maybe if you could find it for us. Uh, I think he set some fires and some guys died. Oh, oh, yeah, they got a lot of that. Uh, I think some of the fire guys died, and now they're they gave him the death penalty. It's a big story. If you could find that one for me, now that we brought it to the table. Wow, that one can't hold up. Huh? That one can't hold up. None of them death hold up anymore. I know. None of them. It's a it's a fake thing now. These this death penalty. Appeals after appeals. Not to they... bore people with the same old shit, but you know, New York has a death penalty. It, it never used it. It was enacted what, fifteen, seventeen years ago? Yeah, whatever. Fifteen years ago, maybe. I'm attacky for We haven't killed in. anybody. No. Not a one. So faggots. We should... It's a fake thing. Those people in the uh, strap in that chair, what gurney, whatever they do. I say you kill people just to have more room on the highways. That would be nice. For real. See if they could drive right. Here is the uh, the weirdo. Well, if you do this first, that What's would that? really help. Close the little door. <laughs> <laughs> this is a day Moshe Kai will remember for the rest of his life. Oh. Exciting. Um, first time I'm graduating. I'm super proud. Uh-oh. I'm so excited and... Uh, this day finally come, uh, we just so joyful, yeah. This day has finally come for an 11-year-old. Everyone finally. very, very excited. What do you guys think? I think, um, well, uh, he got laid. Mm, no. That would be a good answer. He got no bell for you, my Obviously. Friend. He got a hair on his wiener? Ah. Ah, he got one hair on his wiener. One no. little... No, he graduated. Not me. No way. Not once. Not never. He graduated. Not never. Yes. He graduated. Yes, good, good. 11 years old. The sixth grade. Kindergarten. He's a <laughs> dunce. <laughs> He's a blithering <laughs> idiot. Complete dunderhead. <laughs> dunderhead. He would eat the chairs. They would leave him back. <laughs> well, listen to what this braggart's up to. Yes, the 11-year-old will be a graduate. A college graduate. Jesus. I don't consider myself a genius or because... You are. Um, you I are. consider myself a hardworking person that uses willpower. No, you're a Is genius. Is he a little you're Asian a, child? You're 11 years old. You're a genius. Is he a little Asian child? I, you got to think. Hey, I just... You don't mind that stereotype, right, Asians? Because they're very, very, very um, uh, smart, uh, uh, hardworking people. They were bright people. Yes. Well, he's, he's saying like every 11-year-old could, you know, graduate Yeah, college. I just worked hard. No. No, you got something a little that. special. There's lots of dummies out there that doesn't matter how hard they work. They need the Sylvan Center. <laughs> Bunch of fucking retards. Have to send your kid there. Oof. Uh, what's that, Ant? I can't read from here. Death sentence in wildfire that killed five. Oh. Yes, Steve. A Southern California auto mechanic was sentenced to death Friday for setting a wildfire that killed a U.S. a U.S. Forest Service firefighting crew in 2006. Raymond Lee Euler, 38, heard the penalty pronounced in a hearing in Riverside Superior Court. The Contra Costa Times reported Judge W. Charles Morgan said he had no reason to override the recommendation the jury rendered in March. He was found guilty on March 6th of five counts of first-degree murder and 37 other felonies for setting the Esperanza fire in the San Jacinto... It's not going to hold up. Ant's right. It's not going to hold up. up. A good lawyer will get him out. He'll get life in prison or something. Because they can't prove he intended to kill people. Thank you, Jimmy. Exactly. Exactly. They'll say he considered a property crime. Yeah, he'll he'll say, I want to burn up some property. My plan wasn't to kill people. It's It's unfortunate for those five guys, obviously. It's the eco-terrorists, man, where they start fires and burn people's houses down and shit. Spoiled little fuckers, for the most part, ought to be drowned. Let's yes. uh, get the second part of the 11 year old graduating college. We first met Moshe when he was just starting college mm-hmm. at eight years old. He says he keeps pretty busy. Uh, stop it. Stop it. How the fuck do, at eight do you start college? It's impossible d- math wise. <laughs> like it doesn't work out. You fucking shoot out of the womb and you're in the fifth grade. What the fuck happened to this kid? That's really funny. There's no way. It doesn't, what, eight years old. It's what like, grade yeah, are you supposed to, to be in uh, at seven? Second grade? Is yeah. Is that about right? Yeah. First, second grade? So someone saw him in the second grade and goes, you know. He's good enough for college. <laughs> we got to go right to college. With right this to kid. college. Fuck it. He How did do you so make well that leap? Coloring. Look, yeah. I, 
I, I, don't, I don't mean to brag a little bit, but I knew a little something about math when I was growing up. And I got pushed forward a few grades, and I thought that was an amazing feat. You don't want to do that. I, I was one of those fuckers in uh, in uh, grammar school already in junior high math and all that. Yeah, but you told us you were a math whiz, and then we were doing those calculations oh, yeah. for gallons. Oh, yeah, I lost it all. I've seen chimps with their toes <laughs> oh, oh, do yeah. better calculations. Oh, you're, you're 100% <laughs> right. And I got like I got nephews and nieces moving up to that algebra and stuff, and that, and you know I've bragged about the fact that I know math. Yeah, I, I can't even do a simple al algebra algebra program uh, a problem. Excuse me anymore. You do know that they, they I can't I can't. Well, I could do the simple ones actually. But did you see the phone? What happened? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Some teenager solved a three hundred year old math problem. Mm -hmm. Really, three hundred year old math problem that some teenager took a few months and solved. How it. smart could they have been three hundred years ago? It's Mathematically. Easy. Yeah, same thing as now. Dude, the answer was nine. Yeah, I know that, and you know yeah, that, but they didn't. That. <laughs> I just didn't feel like getting the credit. I, I figured, you know what, give someone else the credit. Just let someone else go with it. Yeah, I got enough uh, cool stuff happening to me. In my there's no reason life. for there be an, to be an X or a P with numbers. Thank you, Jimmy. You're this, this is unnecessary. Right. You're so right. He says he keeps pretty busy. His passion for piano, martial arts, and of course, there was school. Favorite subjects... Math, physics, astronomy, tougher is better. So it's not surprising he found himself tutoring others. I'd like to help them to bring to my level. For now, things are leveling off for Moshe. He'll take a break for six months. Then it's off to a four-year university. He likes MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Berkeley, a bunch of other top schools. And when he enrolls, he'll still be 11. So what do you want to be when you grow up? The future is not ours to see, but I tend to be an astrophysicist, a movie actor, and compete in the 2016 Olympics. It's oh, yeah, he'll probably do it all. <laughs> He's Michio Kaku Jr. The kid sounds like a little troublemaker. Yeah, a bum. He he plays piano. Like, how do you have time to go through all the grades, play fucking piano, tutor other kids? Oh, imagine being the father of that kid, knowing that you are a dummy compared to your 11 year yeah. old. It runs circles around you. Oh, uh, you want to play catch outside, son? <laughs> he needs to smoke some no, weed. No, I'm figuring out uh, string theory. It'll screw him up. Theories this afternoon, Dad. Once he sticks his dick in one girl, it's over. <laughs> die! Die! <laughs> die! Die! <laughs> you shoot one load and you're a moron. You know what? Uh, I think we got another, uh, another uh, little bit to this story here. Yeah? I better fist. I better fatalisk burned. Had our compadre, little kid in the background, fucking going crazy. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's going crazy, all right. So we're talking about um, uh, college graduates, and I, we say this every time this comes out. Yeah, you get one of these a year, maybe two. Ugh. This is your feel-good story, I guess. A ninety-year-old mm -hmm. Illinois uh, woman gets high school diploma. Oh fuck, she didn't even do the college thing. You got That's a only high school. Ah. <laughs> you suck. High school. You suck. <laughs> well, you got a lot. I mean, you know what? This news shouldn't have came out the same day uh, an 11 year old genius is graduating college. Yeah. 90 year old suburban Chicago woman who dropped out of school to help her family during the Great Depression now has her high school diploma. Don't use the fucking depression as an excuse. It ended at some point. You could have gone back to school. When did the depression end? The Great Depression. 19? You know, after the uh, when uh, the shenanigans started with uh, you know World War Two. I'm trying to think if I know my history. Shenanigans. When did the, In the 30s? I was going to go 30s. Yeah. Okay. 30s. Uh, Eleanor Benz left Chicago Public Schools Lakeview High in 1936. So it, was at the end, so it was kind of at the end of the, the Depression, yeah. no? Her senior year to take a job. Over the following decade, she moved to the suburb of, ready for this? Mm. Gurney. No way! <laughs> That's Another where the president <laughs> uh, allegedly um, had oral sex with a gentleman that accused him of having oral sex with him. Right here in Gurney. <laughs> Crack cocaine wow. for Obama, right? Powder cocaine yeah, for him. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. Gurney. And had 15 children, 54 grandchildren, and 37 great-grandchildren. Oh, Christ. Well, back then, I guess you had to populate the fucking planet. She, she was a baby machine. No shit, huh? Uh, she attended night school for typing and bookkeeping. Yeah, good womanly jobs. Could Wait. Did you take a punch back then? <laughs> they all could. You sure I could. Place. My roast, it's burned. Bam. 
Why would you take typing? Like, we're all great. We, we're all great at typing now, just because of the computer age. Well, yeah. Right? Oh, she on the ENIAC? <laughs> <laughs> and bookkeeping? Bookkeeping, very important. But she recently told one of her daughters that never completing high school was one of the greatest disappointments. Her children contacted the school, and they just gave her a diploma. It looks oh, like. she didn't even have to work for it. It says the school approved of her diploma, so it looks like she didn't even have to go back to school for it. Why don't they do that for me? I got to be 90. Take pride and you in the fact swear, you don't have one, dude. Well, you swear all you have to do is complete gym, too, right? All I, all I fucked up at is was real? some gym credits. Yeah. What a fucking asshole. Yeah, I know. He's an asshole. Uh, I thought you were me. <laughs> nah. I, <laughs> I so go back. That's a funny sitcom. The older gentleman goes back and takes gym class. Oh, da -da 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 Here comes Anthony. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, yeah, I'm just fucking diddling the girls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, he's the oldest kid in class. He gets them drugs and fucks their heinies. He's Anthony. <laughs> he's older than the teachers, and he makes more money than the whole school. He's an alcoholic. He's Anthony. <laughs> he needs two credits to graduate. He makes $8 million a year, but he wants the credits anyway. Why? I don't know. He's Anthony. <laughs> Think how cool I could be pulling up in a high school uh, in the Shelby. See, yep. I'd have a nice car. I can invite the girls over to the hot tub <laughs> to drink. You'd have right. an excuse to have the high school girls at your house. So they would fucking We're clamor. studying. Yeah. He tries to be everyone's friend, but he gives all the girls the creeps. He's Anthony. <laughs> they think he's somebody's father who just showed up for no reason. He's Anthony. <laughs> he drives a Shelby. All the kids key it because they hate his guts. He's Anthony. <laughs> Uh, high school girls in the backyard. <laughs> they say, we don't care if you have a jacuzzi. You're a creep. We all have them, too. We're rich kids. You're Anthony. <laughs> Stop acting like it's a spaceship, asshole. It's only a jacuzzi. <laughs> it has bubbles. It gets hot. We get it. We get it. <laughs> It's a long opening. <laughs> it's a very long show. Sherwood Schwartz is creating it. Sherwood Schwartz. <laughs> There's a lot of things. Oh, they're going to show Brett get smacked in the face? Oh, the video's big. No, and we just TV. got the exclusive. Broken Nose oh. for Brett Michaels. They better quote our fucking show. His legs Because the press came release isn't the... out yet, my friends. His legs came off the fucking ground mm -hmm. when he hit that thing. He was walking. He It took his legs right out from under him. <laughs> that's right. He's Anthony. He's Anthony. That's right. <laughs> oh, he tries to brag about things that all the kids already have. What a dope. He's Anthony. He tells them he has baseball cards and bubblegum. <laughs> Anthony brags about things that would have been cool in 1975, but now everyone has them, so they don't care. He's Anthony. <laughs> But he doesn't care as long as just one girl out of the hundred come over. The one girl who shows up has a Pete Rose haircut. He fucks her anyway because he's Anthony. And daddy issues. <laughs> oh, my chest. <laughs> Hopefully Harper. Uh, uh, we got some good phone calls coming in here. I think the phone number's on your unit. I, d I don't know the fucking phone number. It's a big unit. Uh, Graham, you got something on the 11-year-old genius. Yeah, did y'all ever see that episode of Dirty Jobs where they're milking uh, like thoroughbred horses for their jizz? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they're selling them for like thirty grand a vial. I was thinking this kid's dad could start selling his jizz. Ah, have the kid jack off into vials and then sell it as genius kid yeah, jizz. Yeah, they, they could maybe they could maybe even make a Dirty Jobs episode and uh, bring in the topless uh, gymnast. And bring the dad in right before he's getting ready to fuck her. Uh, Mike Rowe could pop out and deflect his dick. All right, let's mm -hmm. calm down a little we, bit. We, we, we got like the, your concept, but We Jesus. got the concept. The kid's only Jesus. 11. Yeah. yeah, let's calm down a little bit. Got a couple of years. Yes. It would be a good family business. Yeah. Why not? You can bring in some big bucks, I'm thinking. Sell genius jizz. <laughs> genius jizz. Oh, he carries a trapper keeper full of Hitler photographs. He's Anthony. <laughs> he tries to quote downfall to all the teenage girls. He gives them the willies. He's Anthony. <laughs> the willies. <laughs> 
Let's go to Jared in Boston. Jared. He's the only high school student that has hair plugs. <laughs> plugs. I do not have hair plugs. They say, hey. <laughs> they say, hey, there's a toilet seat cover on that guy's head. He's Anthony. <laughs> oh, I don't have plugs. Just accept it. You do. No. They just changed the name. That's all. No, they're individual thing, follicles name. placed <laughs> independently. Look, you, you don't even have it in you anymore to try to explain. Plugs with those eraser-sized <laughs> things that they put in your head that made you look like you had Barbie doll hair. These are very individual. Every hair is individually <laughs> placed. It takes forever. Not forever, but, you know, good fucking ten hours. While all the kids are having a catch, Anthony's passed out with guns in his hand. He's Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> The show should be 25 minutes of the opening song, and then <laughs> yeah. maybe five minutes of actual... Five minutes of me trying to do pull-ups for <laughs> or credits. Or something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> or, oh, yeah, running through the gym. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, got to run Let's through go gym to class. Chris, Christian, it looks like. <laughs> Miller Place. Christian. Oh. Good morning, gentlemen. Good Hi, morning, sir. Christian. Um, a couple years ago, I've been a fan since day one, and a couple years ago, sitting in a college class... But for coaching at Stony Brook, and the professor's in front of me is talking. He goes, yeah, there's, there's some guy, Anthony, on the radio who's blaming me for failing high school. And, of course, that catches my attention. And he knows, the professor knows that Anthony talks about him on the radio. He's like, yeah, if he had just finished his phys ed classes, maybe I would have passed him. He was a derelict when I knew him. Uh, he, he, I, had, he had some nice things to say, needless. Was he uh, Cirillo? That's him. Yeah. You know Coach what? Cirillo. You know what, though? You, you shouldn't fail. I was a degenerate back then. <laughs> yeah, but I was. <laughs> if, you, if you passed everything but Jim, you yeah. got to give the kid the the diploma. Yeah, yeah, hand me the diploma. Yeah, we all know Anthony better than that. That's right. Exactly. You know why? Because when he was in high school, he had hair like Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. He's Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> I did. All right, have a great day, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Wow, he's a he's a professor at Stony Brook now. What is he professing? Toes on the line? Oh, shit. No, bring, you didn't. Bring your shorts uh, uh, home and wash them every so often. Come here. Come here. Come here. Why don't you have your uniform? <laughs> Toes on the line. Toes on the line. <laughs> Come here. Why don't you have your uniform? It's not a uniform. They're called fucking shorts. And no, I don't have them. I'm just, I got my sneakers on with my jeans. What are we going to be doing that? I really need fucking, like, workout attire. Stupid. We gotta fucking play goddamn uh, 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 volleyball. They should have worked something out with you. That's dumb. Let's go to Eric and me. Toes on the line. That's what I remember from him. <laughs> Why toes, toes on the line? Because we all had to stand at attention because we're in the fucking military for some reason with gym teachers. Before you do they a little think fucking, They think they're drill instructors. You're not. You're failed fucking athletes. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> No oh. way. No how. Failed athletes. His anger at the teachers comes out when he's in class. He gets thrown out again because he's 53. He's Anthony. 53? Come on. <laughs> I don't know his real age. I'm Jim. <laughs> Let's go to Eric and Maine. Eric. Hey, guys. Hey. Uh, maybe Jimmy can make a song about this. Uh, the girls are going to think he's creepy, but just how, imagine how the boys are going to feel when they have to shower with him after gym class and they see that massive. Oh, yeah. oh boy! Oh, geez, that could be a problem. That's right. Don't yeah, don't that's... don't shower with the other boys. I'll take cold showers. Uh, speaking of that, his hog his hog hangs out his gym shorts. He's Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> his big delicious cock should be black. It's not. He's Anthony. <laughs> uh oh, we got something. Uh, Sean in North Carolina. Sean. Comia, Comia, Comia. <laughs> I think he passed out at the 7 Eleven, but someone said he made it okay. I'm, I'm in. First Bueller. Very nice. Where's Mr. Comia? Is he still on campus? <laughs> I maybe, think I saw him by you know the what? food machine. Maybe you get a little, like, Rudy moment. You go back to high school and you get on the football team or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I would do. carry off the field going, Kumia? They, yeah, they, that's they, exactly huh? what I would do. They carry him off the field because he's been tackled by a <laughs> six-foot-five guard and is paralyzed below I'm the neck. Dead. <laughs> yeah, they have to carry him off and get a fucking tube so he can breathe. <laughs> but then they go, to this, funny man. Then they go, you know, he's suffering enough, so they give you the diploma. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he, they, hand, they put it in his teeth, and he's sitting in that chair with his fucking staring straight ahead with his stupid little fucking cardboard hat on. <laughs> oh, he shits into a bag. He breathes into a tube. He's Anthony. <laughs> oh, they they put the gown and cap on. Destroyed. They put the gown and cap on your lifeless body. <laughs> oh, he used to drive a Shelby. Now he wears adult diapers. He's Anthony. <laughs> wow, this has taken a turn, Jim. I, I don't think I like going back to school now. <laughs> That's what happens. I know. <laughs> Jared in Utah has one. Here, Jared. Here, here. While the kids are all having a smoke, he's old enough for a stroke. He's Anthony. Hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> How dare you? Let's go to uh, Chris in New York. Chris. Yo. Hey. I had a teacher flunk me for my uh, gym class so that I had to go back for the 13th grade. And for half a year, I just took nothing but gym. That's what I was supposed to do. What do you mean nothing but gym? You had yeah. to do a whole nother year? I had to take two periods so of gym a day. I noon taking gym classes. That me and my stoner buddy, who also had to take the 13th grade. Kept skipping out on Jim. You know what a bunch of bullshit teacher. that is, though, man? I mean, come on. You go into school. Don't give me shit about fucking gym class. What, what, what is that going to do? Jim should be the a, worst a, part a is, The worst part is the guy decided to open a driving range at, when he retired. So every day he's fucking just hitting golf balls after flunking a bunch of kids in gym. What an idiot. Go for him. It should be a leisure activity. Like, yes, you're, you're doing your yes. school thing, and now it's like, you know, if you want to run around the gymnasium gymnasium for a while, go ahead. Yeah. If you don't, that's fine, Your too. whole fucking uh, future shouldn't depend on whether you f f did enough pull-ups during the presidential physical fitness test. I, I love gym, but... Thank but, you. But what is Aided it? it. But what, yeah. Oh, who doesn't love gym? <laughs> <laughs> but what does it matter in the end? You got enough ac you know, exercise when you weren't in school. No. Matter. When did you stop getting a lot of exercise? Running around like 17, a nut. 18, maybe. The second I started smoking pot. Yeah, see, 17, <laughs> 18. Uh, let me go to John in New York. John. Hello, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Yeah, uh, why do I picture Anthony pulling up in front of the school in a black Trans Am jamming Ario Speedwagon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, how goofy that would look. Yeah. Oh, that would be the ultimate creep. Sitting in, <laughs> sitting in the car with the windows open until that one part with the lyrics you wanted everybody to hear was yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. You would yeah. time that shit, Jimmy? Looking. No, I didn't drive in high school, but I know I'm a, I'm a fucking total douche. I know I would have. I drove my Dodge Aspen wagon. I had a Baja <laughs> That's bug. That's right. A Baja oh, bug? No, that's like a cool a, fucking kind of high school dune, vehicle. Dune buggy thingy. That's very cool. Yeah, that's why I was degenerate. Uh, uh, He's yeah, a degenerate. Yeah, did I say that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Raging Bull? <laughs> yeah, did I say that? <laughs> oh, my God, this is a good one. Less in Alabama. Alabama, moon! Less. Uh, if Anthony went back to school and he had sex with one of the teachers, would the teacher get charged with having sex with an underage student or what? <laughs> Oh, he got it all backwards. Yeah, well. See, I would be in trouble for having sex with somebody who was underage, yeah. even if I had sex with the teacher. <laughs> now he laughs at his own joke. <laughs> and cleaned it up for you there, Les. All right, thanks. All right, buddy. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to Matt on Long Island. Matt. He took you to the prom. He's older than your mom. He's older than your mom. That's funny. <laughs> ah, fucking guy nailed it. Uh, fucking nailed it. Chris in Houston. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey, Chris. Uh, go back to 1959. Hop in the DeLorean, Anthony. Get your diploma there. And I'll fit in. At, uh, yeah. That's bullshit. <laughs> Do you go to Hill Valley High School. You don't, you don't care, right? About a diploma? Yeah. I don't even think about it. Yeah. I could give a flying fuckaroonie, as they say. Doesn't matter to me. School's a waste of time. Fuck it. A Who few, cares? A School? Few, a f forget about it. A few classes were worth it. Not me. And the socializing was very worth it. Got yeah. to prepare for the real world. Yeah, the that's rest all. of it was bullshit. I did a lot of socializing. <laughs> bullshit. That's all I did. No books. way, no how. Mr. Books. Book hands. <laughs> oh, <laughs> reading <rules>. books. <laughs> Fuck no you. way, no how, never. Oh, he quotes a lot from The Shining, and none of the kids have seen it, so they think he's <laughs> retarded. He's Anthony. <laughs> oh, I hated kids like this guy, Joe in Jersey. Joe. Hey, what's going on? I went to school in New York City, 
And my last, my senior year of high school, I had my uh, my gym classes, my last class of the day. I had a one to five schedule. I only had five classes. I was on the baseball team. The baseball coach was a gym teacher. He tells me, "Hey, Joe, uh, this is your last class." I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "See you in June." I said, "I'll see you in June." Never went to class all year long. Passed with an A, whatever. My two buds tried to do the same thing. They had to go to summer school to graduate. Oh, what were you? Yeah. What were you doing to the coach that he Ooh. gave you a little favor there? <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. Yeah, they were the I coaches' was, pets, you know, because they, they were on the football baseball, teams. I was one of the better baseball. players. Yeah. You know what? I kind of hated guys like you, but it, it, it makes sense if you're, you know. Oh, I practice after school, school anyway. every day playing for the high school team, whether it's baseball, for whatever. Yeah, why would you have to take gym too? It's a waste of time. Coach yeah, Cirillo. Working out as it is. Yeah. But my senior, my senior year classes were even worse. I mean, this is New York City schools in the 1980s. Like, yeah, I'm around the same age as, as Opie. My first class of the day was ceramics. My second class of the day was English. All right, I had to go there. Then I had homeroom, independent study photography, and sports history. That was it. Then I went to McDonald's, sports and I was up for a day. History. What did he fucking go to school? Is that Trivial Pursuit? <laughs> Come on. Sports that history. School, man. That's not a class. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, that's what it was. Oh, what a fucking clusterfuck. I got <laughs> so screwed. Stupid Coach Cirillo, see? See what he just said? That I was a degenerate. He did catch me smoking pot, though, outside. I was smoking a big... I took such a huge hit off of this doobie uh, outside, and... It... <gasps> I'm holding it in, and it was by the back gym doors, and they fling open, and there's Cirillo, like right in front of me. He and he just, you. he took his his pointer finger and jabbed it into my stomach immediately, and I just went, <laughs> and just blew pot smoke out. <laughs> and he's like, get to the office. That sounds like a John Hughes film. It did. It, it absolutely happened. He poked me, because he knew, like, kids smoke pot back there. So he was listening. Why are you smoking pot right at the door? Because then you were the cool guy that smoked pot by the door, even though the gym teacher came out every so often. Oh. Yeah, high school fucking yeah, thought pattern. Yeah. So he would listen, and if you're out there and he, and he smelt it and stuff, he would uh, fling that door open and just poke you in the gut. And you go, Puh! and I just blew a big fucking thing of smoke out in his face. What an And asshole. he goes, go to the office. Go to the office. Now. Yeah. Uh, what is this about? This is just mean, Aunt. Dave in Tennessee. <laughs> hey, Anthony, you're that guy that shows up at the party, 50 years old with a Letterman jacket and milk pattern baldness. Well, you got the milk pattern baldness taken care of. A Letterman, a Letterman jacket. jacket. And I'm not 50. Shut up. <laughs> Jesus. And I don't have a Letterman jacket. I show up. Hey, girls, I lettered in track. <laughs> That was an accomplishment. I, uh, fuck that. I lettered it in track. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you still fun. have your jacket? Now you're making fun of me. Do you have your jacket? Oh, no, hell no. Let did me say hi big, to... Did you have a big H for it, horror yeah, films yeah, on your... I still have the big H. I never put it on anything. Did you wear it? No. Did you that's ever the truth. wear it? Yeah. I got the big H yeah. for being on a varsity team. Should now, have been were... followed by <laughs> IV. <laughs> 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 Let's go to Chris in Jersey. Yeah. Chris. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. When run, when running, he gets cramps. The people call him Gramps. Is Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> uh, punch it out, guys. Let's say hi to Alex in Jersey. Alex. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hi. Yeah, I uh, my gym teacher wouldn't wouldn't pass me, so instead of going to summer school, I just dropped out my senior year and got my GED. Took the year off, went to college. And then uh, I ran into him a couple of years later, and he shit his pants when I told him how much money I was making. Yeah, gym teachers make no money. Oh, believe me, they I were, never... They were bitter, those guys. I, I never bragged about anything, or any, and, and I pretty much never had contact with these people, but they've, they've heard. I know a few people that uh, I, I talk to that have talked to certain teachers that I went to school with, and they've heard of my, my accomplishments throughout the years. So, uh, yeah... Sorry. Sorry I didn't fucking get your, your, your diploma from your fucking school. I think most teachers don't get it. Like, yeah, yeah. they should be embracing people backwards. like yourself in, in high school. But instead, Maybe I would have made a donation to their radio program. Uh, Maybe I would have. Maybe that's what it'll take to get a diploma. No way, no I'll how. Say, uh, look, I'll make a donation to your radio program. I know they had a, they had a radio program. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, uh, yeah, I'll buy you some equipment with this uh, little donation. You give me the old sheepskin, 
and uh, we're, we're fucking quid pro quo. I got my diploma. Mm -hmm. For what? What do I need a, a fucking diploma for? I got a GED three years after I got sober, which was uh, probably I was about 21. I just didn't need it. And that's not a diploma. Yeah. A fucking diploma. Who general equivalency. A general equivalency diploma. I've never seen the phones lit like this to talk about gym. We're talking about high school dropouts. What do you think? Our listeners are all college. Uh, yeah, talk about exactly. Menzo. Watch the phone fucking go blank. <laughs> <laughs> Barry. Yo. Hey, Barry. Hey, ma'am. Check this one out. Now, I was a state champion and all that in, in track. I'm the opposite of the guy who got the free ride from the from the gym teacher. I, I got failed. I got an incomplete because I refused to take gym. I refuse. So you got here. He is Barry. He's a great athlete, and the gym teacher fucks him over. Yeah, yeah. basically. It, don't you take gym to be a better, I don't know, athlete or something? Yeah, you would think. But if you're already a great athlete, then why would you fail gym because you're not really going because you're a great athlete? Like playing on the team. Right. It doesn't make sense. Oh, Barry's gone? All right, whatever. Let me say hi to Kirk in Kentucky. <laughs> Kirk. Yeah. Guys, I'm 16. I'm still a junior. Okay. Is that bad? You got any advice on how to make it through the next two years? I've been listening to your show since I was 12. Well. I got wait a minute, wait a minute. This bitch. Wait a minute. There's freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Right. Yes. So you only have one more. You, no, uh, junior. I'll, I'll be a junior. Oh, you'll be yeah, a junior. Yeah, we're in, we're in uh, summertime now, so yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. He's got junior and senior year to go. Uh, junior and senior. You're 16, 17, 18. Okay. What kind of advice do you need? Why? You having trouble? You seem to have made it so far pretty good. I don't want to drop out and then you pick up some chicks. Oh, oh, well, then just leave. Fuck it. <laughs> no, I've I've always regretted uh, not graduating because it did hold me back for things I wanted to do. Uh, not the d high school diploma, but the need to have one in order to go to like college. I would have done that yeah, now. I need to go to college. Knowing what I know now, I would have done that. And Although you would have would have known that I would have gotten into radio, so I'd fuck said fuck no, it a I lot think, earlier. I think you wanted to go to college. You, yeah. you you like uh, getting knowledge. I wanted to go to college. Did you really? Actually, I wanted to, you know, get laid. I wanted to go to like, um, I wanted to be in the Rotsies. <laughs> oh, really? I would have liked to have, uh, you know, joined like officer school, officer training school. Yeah, why didn't you? Uh, why didn't you join the military? I was afraid. <laughs> For real? <laughs> no, because I fucked up in school and everything, and I knew I could just go in as the enlisted guy like my brother did. I wanted officer training. <laughs> oh, I see. So if you got the diploma, yeah, and all that, I would have had to have, okay. you know, gone to school and shit. I want your D O R. D O R. Drunk on request. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that for you, sir. <laughs> I was watching Navy, Navy SEAL, Navy SEAL training uh, on the military channel. Holy fuck. That hell week they put them through? Oh, Un-fucking believable that they're eating and falling asleep. They don't let these fucking guys sleep. They got to carry these huge fucking 150-pound boats over their heads with the rest of their boat squad. And the whole time, the instructors are throwing sand at them and shoving, like, oars full of sand down their back so they're all chafed up and cut and then they make them go into freezing cold water and just sit oh, there. Oh, it's horrendous. And, and, and then there's the bell. And people just get up, ding, ding, ring that fucking bell. You want to ring that bell? You want to ring that bell? Get out. And, and it's just a guy in your face. They don't even talk to you. He talks to a bullhorn right. right into your face. Come on, what's your problem? What are you doing? Get over there. Get, now, get, now, because you did that, the rest of your uh, guys have to do push-ups. And then you just stand there like private pile with your thumb in your mouth. As the rest of your guys do push-ups and Shit. just this, the SEAL training looked fucking horrifically tough. Isn't an hour a night they get to sleep for a week? Yeah, it's like, it's like, it, even that is inconsistent. And then they, they, uh, they eat and when they're sitting in, in the mess hall eating, they're, they showed these guys literally falling asleep in their food. And then they try to stand up because they've been active the whole time. You know how when you, your legs freeze up on you? After you've been active mm -hmm. for a little while. And they're like walking like they, they're crippled. Wow. And then back out, same fucking thing. Lift that goddamn boat over your head. Run around with it. Digging holes. Where do you see this? 
Uh, this is on the military channel. You can find it on the old YouTube or something. And dude, the yeah. food, like after they put the food in the garbage, that's what they make them eat is the fucking garbage. Oh, I've seen sick. that too, where they have because it's all just guys eating food. It's nothing. It's not from. It's like they cook them food, they eat it, and whatever they throw out, that's the next meal. Like they have to eat Oof. that. I've seen that too. They're constantly throwing sand at them too. It's like that's got to be so fucking annoying. And then they make them. Yeah, they make them lock arms and. Lay in the uh, in the surf as the tide's and coming. it's fucking cold. You just see these guys shaking. They're Fuck. freezing cold, and then you have to run with all your equipment on into the water, roll around, and then run back within sixty seconds. Or your fucking squ the squad you're in has to do push-ups. So you have to fucking do it, or else you fuck your uh, your guys over. How many guys we lose every year? I think there were no. I mean, I mean, lose. Oh, dying. I don't know. They started out something like one squad started out with uh, uh, thir 30, I think, 30 candidates, and only nine made it. Wow. Another one started out with uh, 50, and I think um, 19 made it or something. Really, some of the toughest training I've ever uh, seen uh, people have to go through. Ridiculous. <laughs> animals, man. These guys are fucking animals to pull this off. Yeah. They bust them apart physically, uh. and then toward the end, they just... Start hitting them, hitting them mentally, too. They got a lot of that mental shit on them. They fuck with their brains. Should we squeeze this one thing in? Yeah, yeah. Might as on. well. All right, one more thing. Is that right, Mars? Yeah. He's nodding his head, yes. Go Police on. were called to the 38th Street in Washington Station because of a man on board playing with feces. <laughs> That's not <laughs> <the> man. <laughs> playing. See, this is, is why. Is it playing when it's feces? See, this is why you gotta allow, you know, violent video games, or you're gonna have this all over the place. <laughs> People are gonna be so bored. Is it playing with feces, though? Because, like, it, it becomes a whole nother thing. I think it's. <clears throat> yeah. What do you think it is? I don't know, because you're not playing with it. It's toying. Oh, toying? Manhandling or, feces. Or handling. Yes. Handling feces. Fiddling about something. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like. Twiddling yeah. feces. And I'm playing with feces. Let me think that. What depends what? on what he was doing, Ant. Because it's Wait. so sick Wait. that the word playing doesn't even fit. Ant, put a pile of feces in front of you, an right. imaginary pile, and like, what is it? Like, you're kind of... Now you can uh, handle it. You're handling you're kinda feces. kind of fooling around with feces, I'll call it. You're jockeying with feces. Ah? Mm. Online feed is dead. Online feed is down. You're kidding. All right, all right. <laughs> we got to get the feces story. That's nasty. Nasty. The girls pretty much summed it up. Police were told the man who was on board the train was flicking or smearing feces which he had with him. That's so nasty. It was 8 in the morning, the middle of rush hour. Passengers who did what they could to get away were allowed to get off the train at 38th Street in Washington. Other riders can't imagine being in that situation. I would move and change to another seat. Just run off the light rail. Really? Wow. Really? You, really? Would, you would move your seat? Really? If someone's flicking shit at me, I think I'd move. Yeah. Wow. You're a crazy woman. Just run off the light rail. I don't even care if it was moving. I would um, obviously move from the area um, of the feces really, and um, make sure I tell the correct um, authorities about the situation. The train operator was notified and light rail quickly took the train out of service. It's a biohazard and we have protocols for how we handle situations like this. Those protocols include disinfecting the train. Even though this is very bizarre, light rail anticipates everything. The metro is a public space. Um, what happens potentially in a park could also have the potential to happen on board. The man who police say is homeless was questioned at the station and eventually released. Why was he released if he was throwing shit around on a train? They just don't hold anybody for shit unless it's murder. For shit, literally. Or rape. Or, yeah, for shit. Like, if you do a, a real crime, but they don't hold people. And then this guy will do something crazy and then just chop someone up. And they'll be like, well, boy, they had him. I don't understand why this guy wasn't held longer for something. There's no rooms in the jails anymore. You're right, Rich. Sunday is Father's Day is Tuesday. <laughs> is your father still around, Rich? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm at Caroline Sunday. I'm going to have him uh, come down to my show and kill two birds with one stone. Hang out with him. Do you hang out with your dad still? <laughs> he comes to some of the kill shows. Kill two so. bird brains with one stone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's a smart guy. <laughs> yeah. Talking about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he just goes, yeah. Well. I thought you didn't like your dad. No, I like my dad. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? He's all right. All right. You know? All right, we're going to play a little. He listens. Who, who's huffing and puffing in here? 
Oh, I'm hearing. Usually it's Rick. It's not Maybe me. it's Billy Play. Is Dr. Michael Bodden in here? Are <laughs> 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 we, we leaving in a few minutes? In a few. Apparently. Yeah. A Belgian teenager is suing a tattoo artist after asking for three stars on her face and ending up with 56. 18-year-old Kimberly Vlamenik says she fell asleep during the procedure and was horrified when she woke up to find her face covered in ink. No she way. wants $17,000 to cover the cost of removing the extra tattoos. Yeah, this is one of the big stories of the day. This uh, this girl's claiming that she fell asleep as she was getting tattooed and uh, woke up with a million stars on her face I mean, instead of the three she wanted. She woke up shit. seeing stars. <laughs> that's that's Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard? Yeah. First of all, you're a heavy Ooh. sleeper if you don't wake up through 56 stars being tattooed yeah, on no your face. Yeah, no kidding. What the fuck? I'm mm. a heavy sleeper. Wow. <laughs> Holy fat. shit. She really, uh, she really starred up. Wow. What is she doing? What the, the fuck little is she ones. even doing with three? They don't even look like real stars. They look, they look like, like little like stars. Usually stickers. they go for that Kat Von D little oh. thing by the eye. Right. Is like that a the couple new one? stars, yeah. That's the new thing there, Pad? You yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm up on all that stuff. Are you? Sure. When you tattoo- I was going to get tattoos of like hot dogs. How many hot dogs I've eaten? You know how they do the, yeah, the like slashes? A <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like slash, 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 and then cross. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, like with hot dogs. Off, little hot dogs. Count off time in prison. Yeah. Her toes. <laughs> so she's claiming I'd have that. I have to have those removed. <laughs> <laughs> and all the other toes are fine? So far. I had a scare, uh, like, a few weeks ago. Uh-oh, what? But, uh, but thankfully, I and I credit you and Dr. Steve, because if I wasn't on my uh, diabetes drugs, I probably would have lost a toe, because I had a little injury on the very bottom of one of my toes, and it got red. And that's exactly what happened to the one that I lost. Oh, it shit. just didn't get better. But this time, I took some antibiotics, cleared right up. Wow. wow. Yeah. Saved a toe. Yeah. You're welcome. I thank you. You're welcome. Almost Pat. lost another. Yeah. We, we took wow. up a collection for uh, Pat and Big A's medical bills, and, and then uh, Big A ate up most of the funds. Yeah. <laughs> and poor Pat Quite almost, literally. And poor, <laughs> and poor Pat almost lost a toe. Yeah. Jesus. It's only so much money we can yeah. collect. Let's get the horse fuck story on. Yes. Oh, this guy fucked a horse? What happened? Well, yeah. he uh, he has a history of doing this. <laughs> he got caught. It's called buggery, you know. Is it? Is that what buggery is? Yeah. I didn't like know horse that. Like horse and buggy? No, because buggery... Because you're being a buggy sort of for the English horse. It's an English law. Yeah, you're kind of being a buggy by proxy. <laughs> it's like buggery. I don't know if that is what you're it hook is it up. from. No, because I don't, I don't know, because it, it means... Um, uh, anal intercourse with a man or a woman. If you're a guy and you have anal intercourse with a man or a woman, you are uh, engaging in buggery. But also, vaginal intercourse with a horse is buggery. But anal with a horse is not considered buggery. It's considered <laughs> something else. You know, some sick sodomy fucking thing that will still get you put on the rack in England, I'm sure. But, <laughs> but it, who wouldn't it, decide like, that one? Yeah, they decided that buggery... Is uh, sex up the ass on on, on a human uh, or um, uh, vaginal sex with a horse? But wait a minute, sex up the ass with a human or vaginal sex with a horse? Yeah, is the same thing. It's buggery. Same thing. Can you believe that shit? <laughs> but you could fuck a horse in the ass, and it's not buggery. And it's not buggery. <laughs> but is it something worse? A I'm person's sure. asshole and a horse's vagina. vagina. Same thing. Yeah. They considered it the same kind of fucking... Well, but wait, maybe is there a step up for horses' assholes? Maybe it's just another thing. I think that's thing. what it is. I think it's even worse. It's like murder one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although the 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 um the penalty for buggery yeah. up until 1861... getting fucked up the ass by a well, horse. Yes, <laughs> yes, the horse yeah. gets to have his little piece with you. <laughs> was death by hanging. Really? And then after that, it was life in prison. And now did you have to sit on the horse that you fucked in the ass when yeah you, when you get home? Fuck you and the horse you fucked. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you and the horse you fucked and fuck both. And fuck both of them. Yeah, anal intercourse by a man with a man or woman, mm -hmm. or vaginal intercourse by either a man or a woman with an animal. Now, how does a woman? Where are you reading this off of, by the way? Uh, the definition of buggery. Uh, from what though? Uh, from uh, Wikipedia. Yeah, you just go Wikipedia on buggery. Anal intercourse. 
<clears throat> I love also the stuff that's highlighted to give you other references. Yes, yes, I might need Handle that intercourse note at the back. Uh, the, the, yeah. Handle in intercourse highlighted if you're interested. More to, more to say about that. <laughs> yes, it's a link. by a man with a man or a woman. Yeah, you can't. Or fuck that vaginal ass. intercourse by either a man or a woman with an animal. With an animal. So how does a anything. woman fuck a horse up the asshole? That's what I want to know. Well, a vagina. Vagina. Oh, vaginal intercourse. Yeah. How, okay, so then, yeah. How does a woman? I guess with her fist? You can't fist a horse in a No, vagina? I think that means letting a horse... <gasps> oh! Fuck you. Oh! Look at you. Hey, look I've at been, me. I've been thinking of that, like, since I read it yesterday, going, how does a woman do... But it's, it's the a, horse fucking the woman. Or, a, if I said, now, by the way, it says animals. So, yeah, a dog... Anything. Women can be fucked by dogs. I've seen now, it. Now, what about... What's, what about the woman getting fucked in the ass by an animal? Because that wasn't covered there. That's gonna be a That's different thing. That's gotta be worse. Yeah. It's gotta be worse. They don't step it down and go. Think, At least it's I not think buggery. That's called tomfoolery. Tom <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buggery is like one of those words where it should be yeah. tomfoolery. I think it's a. Uh, I think a, a woman being fucked in the ass by a horse is yes. shenanigans. I think it's yes. shenanigans. Only done by a scallywag. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow, they just said shenanigans. shenanigans. Visiting this website may harm your. That's all these words that okay. used to be horrible, and now yeah, they yeah. don't matter anymore. Now it's just yeah. funny. Yeah, it turns out. Yeah, if you really look up the oh, ep yeah. etymology or whatever it's called, shenanigans. Turns out a, a, a horse coming in a woman's mouth is called silliness. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that it's been softened over the years. <laughs> Yeah, being engaged in shenanigans years ago was probably a pretty bad thing. Yeah. Now it's just, it's funny to say. The yeah. word itself is just... Shenanigans. You can't be serious when you say it. Well, you want the update on the horse fucker? Buggery. I certainly you gotta do. got to hear uh, this one. Barbara Kenley says her horse of 15 years, Sugar, is like a child to her. Oh, boy. Mm. But a year and a half ago, she discovered this man, Rodell Vereen, inside Sugar's stable. Oh, oh stable. Inside so the stable. to stable. speak. Wow. Okay. Well, so wow. Yeah. Stable. All right. Mm -hmm. Inside Sugar Stable, he pleaded guilty to having sex with the horse. I mean, I don't know how to explain to you the sick feeling. Vereen was placed on South Carolina's mm. sex offender list Go and, and got three years probation. But Kenley says that was little comfort to her. Every night going to bed thinking, is that man out there with my animals? What is he doing to my horse? <laughs> fucking it. And uh, I, like I said, I just couldn't sleep thinking about it. She suspected well, Vereen was fucking back. masturbate and, and get it over with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking was to be rub one out and go to sleep. That's what I do when I think uh, I'm fucking the horse. Who cares if someone's <laughs> fucking your horse? Jesus. I just couldn't sleep thinking about it. She suspected Vereen was back and secretly violating sugar again. When I come to feed the next morning, that I hadn't sat out here waiting for him and he, she'd been molested again. It was devastating. Kenley says she would sometimes spend the night inside the stables with a shotgun to keep an eye on with her, Sugar. With her ass perched up waiting. <laughs> Why know? not me? There's a perfectly good fucking woman in the room. Yeah. <clears throat> He's fucking my horse? First of all, you don't name a horse Sugar and not expect it to be fucked. That's just a <laughs> sexy name for a horse. <laughs> <laughs> gotta give it a bad oh, name. God. Oh, this is one of our favorite pictures. Horse you vagina. This is horse vagina. Is it really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does look like I it. I get it. You I know, get it. If you had to. But it looks like it's got balls above it, though. Yeah, that's, it looks upside that's the down. asshole yeah, there's above it. Yeah. And then there's sort of a what looks like the alien that wrapped around that guy's <laughs> neck tail. Wow. Yeah. It doesn't look very hairy. It's really like a... Looks like a Geiger painting. <laughs> They're all pink on the inside. Yeah, it looks like a galaxy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you can see how it would probably feel good on your cock if it wasn't, you know, attached to a It doesn't horse. look very wet. Well, you gotta, you just you gotta whisper in its ear. <laughs> yeah, you fucking hot. Oh, you fucking... Yeah, you... Oh, with a shotgun to keep shotgun. an eye on sugar. She says she thought about shooting Vereen, but didn't want to go to prison. That's when she installed this. And moving my camera in various spots. And then I finally got a good picture. She should have been arrested Police for filming bestiality. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wouldn't that be great if they arrested her? You can't yeah. film this shit. No. It's like fucking, yeah, I'm going to catch a child pornographer for, uh, I'm going to film him having sex with a child. No, that's illegal. Oh, dumb. <laughs>
dumb woman. Yeah, this woman is just, she deserves to have a horse. All that work. Fucked. Yeah, what does she do? For, how does this woman have a horse in a stable and yeah, well, a shotgun and a camera? <laughs> All these fucking props. She's got a bunch of shit going on. Yeah. And then I finally got a good picture of it. Police mm. arrested Vereen on Monday after he was caught on tape earlier this month molesting the horse. Jesus. He didn't resist or fight back or deny. Ooh, and the horse? Yeah, well, the horse loved it. Yeah. The horse does it. Have you ever seen another horse fuck a horse? Yeah. It's probably one of the most violent, violent things I've yeah, ever seen. We had this horse uh, named Concho Pete. Concho Pete was one of the few horses at our stable that wasn't a gelding. Who's, and they used to breed it. About? This one I lived out in California. You I was horses. Oh, horses. Oh, yeah. horses. Fucking, I was Dollars. Mr. Cowboy, equestrian guy. Dream buggies. Oh, dream I had weaver. horses. Yeah, I was the, out there. I was the shit. I have pictures of me with boots, the hat, the whole wow. fucking deal. I was a hick fucking cowboy. <laughs> but I was, you know, 14 years old, so I was a kid. Wow. Grew up that way, yeah. It was, uh, I thought you live, grew up in Massachusetts and you're... No, nah, I grew up in New York originally, and then my father moved out to California, so I went to live oh. with him. And then, uh, you know, uh, he, he, was, he wanted to be a cowboy. <laughs> so Danny's going to find some horse fucking videos. Concho P would bite the back of the neck of all the mares and just stick oh, really? this giant... <laughs> Giant cock. Wow. I don't care. I know the guy ha was of a certain ethnicity. This criminal that was molesting the horses, but no way it's as big as a horse. <laughs> Look at wow. this horse boner. And they just how shove the fuck it. Does in. He uh, guide that in how does he guide that into anything? I think the the people have to guide it in. Like, look, they can't just let them fuck. They're tying this horse up in a certain. Th I guess that's so it doesn't completely kill the the mare but how do they get it done in nature they wrap before the tail we got up. involved they have the tail like a boxer yeah they got to wrap the tail up why do that's you have to the wrap female the, why do you have to yeah but why do you have to wrap to, the tail if the two horses the were, were oh in the oh my god look at this look at this fucking oh, oh man Jesus. holy shit then oh, he's coming all already spurt. he's fucking coming already uh, horses uh, horses <laughs> yeah look at his neck and he's biting the horse's neck and the horse is just standing there like... Horses have no staying power. All horses prematurely ejaculate. Faggot There's horses. no pleasure for the female, huh? Look at that. The no. female doesn't know what the fuck. What a rod about. he's got, the though. female's like, It's bending. He's trying it. to find out how to get in. Good technique on the horse's part, yeah. huh? But that's Boom. two pumps and he's done. Oh. Boom. Two Ugh. pump he's chump. The, he's the two pump kid. Oh, it's all fucking yellow. <laughs> God oh. damn, he is fucking like, in there, too. He's good two That's feet like inside a, that vagina. His cum looks like the wood glue that he's going to be <laughs> in a couple of years. <laughs> From glue to glue. All right, he's done. Get him off the ashes fucking thing. Ashes to ashes, glue to glue. Now he's just, that was good. Burr. See, you think that guy, you think the horse felt that <laughs> fucking guy is all limp now? <laughs> Do you think the horse felt the... And then they the talk human? to a dude. Then they talk to some dude. Never. Well, and then he fucks her and comes all over her eh. fucking cunt. What a creep. That and then a little is. horse comes out later and I fuck it. Now we got a montage. Like, here's two horses. horses just at a park somewhere next to a <laughs> Little League game. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. It's weird how their necks arch kind yeah, of impossibly. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, neck kind of... And the horse stands up like a human when it comes time to do some fucking... That's some yep. horse fucking going on. That's because right. they watched us. Two, yeah. One more. Like, one more. I want to see one, one trying more. to lay the horse on its back <laughs> and do it human <laughs> style. <laughs> I wonder if horses do donkey punches. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the last uh, bit of the story. Ah. He didn't resist or fight back or deny. Now, he did kept apologizing to me. He, he said, if I hurt you, ma'am, I'm sorry. Vereen is now behind bars. Ben Vereen? His brother says yeah. he has mental problems no. and may yeah, not really? have been taking his medicine. I'd like to see him get some help, but I also want him kept behind bars when he's getting the help. Really? Here we go. Oh. Yeah. There it is. Well, oh late, my late God. Year. How are we just watching horse fuck videos? He Look did kept go. apologizing to me. God, did that, he, you that, fucking past tense, not using correctly, stupid <laughs> retard with a fucking horse? Horses just don't look like they're made for fucking. The, the hooves, you don't have any No, yeah, it's almost like hands they, to hold yeah, on. You can't That's grab onto thing. Isn't that weird? It's yeah, like they it's, made them wrong. Like, wouldn't they just be, wouldn't the fucking be the first thing you'd 
when you design an animal? Yeah. Just to make like, sure that you can keep making them, you make them so that they can fuck. Yeah, so they can fuck Why easier than that? Why are they awkward when they fuck? That should be an egg-laying animal. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, it should just be, an, <laughs> a I know it's egg. a mammal, but it should just be a, an egg-laying animal. It's not built for fucking. Uh, what is it? What is this? Oh, though? they're doing that, that weird mouth thing when they smell. Is that a, a Shetland pony or something? Still hung like a motherfucker. These horses. Jesus Christ. How did giraffes fuck? Find some giraffe fucking uh, videos. No That's problem. gotta be impossible. You're not gonna find giraffes That's fucking. That's gotta be Danny finds anything. Giraffes if, fucking. If, Come if, on. if there's fucking to be had, Danny'll find it. Come on. Here we go. Giraffe fucking. <laughs> Actually they're they're Takes built a little so, wedge like, it's just, so it's takes seconds. How the fuck do they get this done? The weird now thing now is the giraffe is just standing behind him. The rocks behind them look like they're Gonna fuck too. <laughs> it's weird. It's that a really is strange a, image. Where is this? Like Disney? That's them. That's how they fuck. Animal oh, here he goes. Oh, hey. oh, shit. Did he just shove it in and that was Holy it? Holy shit! Da it had Whoa. to be one thrust. Fucking today. One thrust that took a tenth of a second. Wow. He, he was. Damn. He just pushed everything forward. What's that about? Did you ever see that video? It's a lot of people have watched it of the. Uh, the, like the wild, what do you call those animals that got antlers? Fuck. Oh, elk or, or so some kind deer, of weird rams. bison or something by a river in Africa, and these cougars come and attack them. Yeah. Did you ever see this video? And Ant then they antelope. end up fighting with a, yeah. with an alligator. That whole oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the oh, greatest yeah. things I ever I saw. Just, the alligator comes out of like nowhere. Yeah, well, but then it's but then the elk water. the elk come back and then they fight back. It's crazy. It's yeah, one of the coolest and, things I've and, ever seen. And there's really no way for them to win. I forget. No, but they do. <laughs> the elk win? Yeah. I guess it's one of the coolest alligator? things I ever saw. I'd take the alligator over the elk any day. <laughs> UFC style. <laughs> uh, alligators are good grapplers. you got to get them on the ground. They're not good on their feet.